And now, something completely different. Good afternoon. I'm speaking to you live just outside. Los Angeles. I like to think balding is just God's way of saying, now let's see you get laid. Is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it? What I'd really like to do is put the greatness of this man in perspective. The halo of community has a lot to be thankful for, having you as a spokesperson. You mean you just call this guy up? About life and about reality. And now, America's number one reality radio show for men. Live from Los Angeles, it's Spencer Cobrin's The Ball Truth. Hey guys, welcome to The Ball Truth. Actually, we are not live from Los Angeles tonight. Uh, we are live from uh, TV studios here in New York City, which is uh, my dad's apartment in Manhattan. Um, by the way, I want to thank all you guys who have written me for the past uh, two and a half weeks to ask uh, how my dad is doing. I really appreciate he's doing much better. But as you can see, I'm still here in New York, uh, trying to get the show out there to you guys uh, with the help of Andrew Zarian and the guys from Queens Network. Uh, Andrew, the number is what? 718-717-2200, correct? That's absolutely right. 718-717-2200. All right, guys, we are taking calls. Uh, the show is going out through, uh, uh, through the ball truth and also uh, syndicated through guys from Queens. So uh, if you have any questions, concerns about your hair loss, this is the hair loss show. Um, you know, two thirds of you by the age of 35 will suffer with some degree of hair loss. 40% of hair loss sufferers are women. And uh, the reason I have been able to do this show, keep the show in the air for the last 14 years, is because this is a silent epidemic of uh, biblical proportions. This affects just about every household in the world. And that's you know, I'm not making use of hyperbole. This is not an exaggeration. You know, I've spent about two and a half weeks uh, here in New York, uh, you know, in, in a hospital with my father. And I have to tell you that it's, you know, you start to lose your mind after a while. And I'm always the type of guy that, you know, I ignore wood clock. I look for hair loss. That's what I do. And I kind of see what, you know, what's out there. And I got to tell you, and I've said this a million times on this program, it's, I don't think I'm, you know, uh, imagining anything. It seems to me that women are losing hair at a much younger age and a much more rapid rate than I've ever seen ever in my in, since I've been doing this, since I've been noticing hair loss. Um, so I just want you ladies out there that are watching the program, that are listening to the show to know that, you know, we're here to help you as well. Uh, I'm not only the author of The Bald Truth, but I'm also the author of The Truth About Women's Hair Loss, which was published uh, about 10 years ago by Contemporary Books and then taken over by McGraw-Hill. And the reason I wrote the book back then is because when I started this broadcast and I started to get myself out there, women were writing me, they were contacting me, and I was a little naive initially. You know, I guess I wasn't looking to see the, you know, uh, the epidemic that was right in front of me, but it was there. And I have to tell you that I'm seeing it more and more now. So, you know, uh, I want you ladies to feel free to call. The phone number is 718-717-2200. That's 718-717-2200. And again, I apologize for the set here. I apologize that, that I'm doing the show through my laptop. But I wanted to, to, you know, still be able to get this out to you guys and give you guys the opportunity to call in and ask your questions. Uh, like you have been for the last 14 years. And I want to apologize to some of the guys that have been writing and uh, basically complaining that they're not getting the show. Uh, we will try to get this broadcast out and up online as well and recorded. Uh, we weren't able to do it for last week's program and the week before I just had to take off. So uh, hopefully everything is going to start getting back on track and we'll get everything out to you guys. Uh, Andrew, I know that uh, we have a caller, right? Is Joe, Joe on the line? Yeah, we have Joe on line one. All right. Joe, what's happening, man? How are you? Well, of course, it won't get my usual opening tonight. I have to ask how your father. Well, first of all, maybe you will get your usual opening. Would you how like do we know? These, my, my usual hair comment? Or what can I ask about? Would you like me to get my hair comment? As usual opening? Did I get to your father? My name is I'll be, I'll be right back! Joe from Staten Island. My name is. Excuse me. I'm coming. Would you like to reiterate it? My name is. My name is. My name is. 
Have you heard it? <clears throat> Excuse me. Hi, my name is Hi, my name is My name is Joe from Staten Island. Joe, we're doing our best, babe. Okay, did you receive my message, Spencer? What she, what I, to you for the I did, I did. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. Well, let's you not so bad, man. Thank you. Happy New Year to you, too, as well. You, too, as well, well whatever that means. Better. You thought I was doing better? This looks like apple juice, doesn't it? You thought I was doing better, Spencer? Uh, yeah, he's actually getting um, uh, significantly better. You know, I don't know if it'll ever be the same. He's 88 years old. But, uh, you know, he had a real scare. He had some really sh- shaky moments where I was, I was thinking, you know what? This is it, dude. You know? But uh, it looks like we're going to be able to get him to rehab, hopefully get him discharged in the next couple of days. And, uh, you know, I mean, the guy's a fighter. The guy is a fighter. We're not getting rid of him so easily. Hey, I'm, 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 uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad to hear that. Well, I'm, 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 I appreciate you, know, you asking. So what, what's I, happening, man? I didn't call because I, too much because I don't want to be intrusive, you know, at a time of crisis. You, you can understand I, that. I, I appreciate that, man. I really do. So what's okay. going on? Uh, well, I have to chastise uh, Dr. Rasmus this evening. All right, let's do it. Because, you know, he has a balding blog. Yes. And he put eight parts series about the ISHRS conference in Akron, Alaska last week. Yes. He talked about some bullshit hair transplant tools, finasteride, minoxidil. He deliberately right. left out the Adirond presentation, the Histogen presentation, and the ASL presentation. My question to you is, what the hell is this guy so afraid of? Well, He's got real it, it, things instead of bullshit. Look, that's an interesting question. I don't know if he's actually afraid of anything. Uh, I just think that, you know, he's concentrating on what he thinks is important, what he finds important. And, you know, the bottom line is, you know, maybe he just didn't have the time to write about what, what uh, you know, was presented about histogen. Or maybe, you know, he did write a little bit about ACEL. And he doesn't seem that impressed. Uh, at least that's what he's putting out there. But I will tell everybody uh, that I, I have been in touch with uh, Craig Ziering. We will be getting uh, his presentation and also getting him on the program to talk about histogen. So just you know, know that it's out there. That it's gonna, it's going to happen. Uh, you know, there's some other conferences going on in Europe right now. So, uh, for instance, Jerry Cooley is going to be providing us some information and also some some of his presentation uh, for you know his work with A Cell. I think that the guys that are really having some success with A Cell are a little disappointed with the way Raspin presented things online, but, you know, it is what it is. And Andrew, by the way, I was just looking at my feed, and uh, I guess I didn't change the aspect ratio. So on the ball truth, I'm pretty compressed. So I have to, I have to remember to do that next time. No, I think it's okay. You're fine. I think you're compressed because of your feed. Okay, that's cool. So um, well, uh, I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be that disappointed. You have to understand, listen, listen. Everyone is waited, waiting with bated breath for you know, information from the ISHRS conference. What I don't understand is until this stuff comes to fruition, what, you know, these little tidbit, tidbits of information are great and they're exciting to get. But you know, because people aren't getting it right away, all of a sudden they think that you know, everything is over. These uh, technologies are never going to come to fruition. The histogen is, you know, is, is you know, bailing out and that uh, you know, A cell isn't working. And honestly, in my view, that's bullshit. That's just not the way it works. You know, these companies and these, you know, uh, uh, principal investigators, they're not rushing to get online to get their information out to the general public. They just aren't. Now, I happen well, to be they, in a position. They're dealing with trillions of dollars. I'm sorry. Say that again? Why would they? They're dealing with trillions of dollars. Why tip their head? They show their cards. Well, a few maniacs sent a message for them. Well, you're, you're right about that. But the, the thing is, you know, I've, I've seen people write some stuff, and I, I happened to get on the message forum a couple of times this week. And people are like, yeah, I, you know, Coburn said he was going to have this interview, and, you know, why, why is he taking so long to get this information out there? What's the difference, guys? It's not here. It's not here to help you guys at this very moment. So, you know, I, I will get the information out there. And like I said, 
Uh, I will be speaking to Craig Ziering. I will be speaking to Jerry Cooley. Everything's set up. I'm actually going to have another interview with David Hall uh, from Replicell to get some more information out to you guys, which I think everyone's going to find very interesting. There's no doubt in my mind that these technologies are coming uh, sooner rather than later. There's no doubt in my mind. And there's, there's absolutely going to be more effective treatments for hair loss in the coming years. So, you know, I mean, it's just... You guys just have to wait. They're just not here yet. Well, my point is, why would someone of Dr. Rasmus' prestige in the hair loss community deliberately leave that out? I mean, what the hell is he afraid of? Maybe he might lose. Some people may wait. He may lose a few customers. I mean, it's obvious what he's doing. It's Look, I, 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 I have a, uh, you know, an interesting relationship with Bill Rasmus. I have a lot of respect for what he's done in the past as far as really promoting what is still considered the gold standard in, in hair transplantation, which is follicular unit transplantation. Uh, there are some things that he has done as far as uh, marketing that I don't necessarily agree with. But, you know, I think everyone has their own reasons. And as far as, you know, being well-known or having prestige in the, in the industry, you know, listen, there's always going to be people with differing opinions. That's it. Do I agree with him? A hundred percent, no. One, I mean, I do not agree with a lot of what he's posting. Um, and I also have, you know, information that I believe is uh, proof positive that these technologies are working at least to some degree. So there's nothing in it for me to say that. Well, you know, I mean, uh, you know, my dissection of his uh, balding blog is an eight-part series. He was an accurate himself. And it's just deliberately leave out important things like Kenny Washenick's presentation and Greg Zeering's presentation and Gary Hitzik's presentation on an A-cell. I mean, to me, that was, I think that was pretty pathetic on his part. I have to say that. I hope you don't mind. Yeah, but he's not a, the guy's not a journalist. The guy blogs, you know. And why do you think that these guys blog? They blog, and, and, and this is no secret, to get traffic to their sites and to, 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 to build the business, you know, to get people through the doors. I don't think that's a secret. And I think that, you know, if he chooses to select to blog about something that he wants to blog about and, you know, leave out what he doesn't want to blog about, you know, the truth is that's his right. He's not a journalist. He's not out there just to, to get information out to the public about everything or, or anything hair loss, you know, except for what he's really interested in, whether it's about a technique that he's providing, whether it's about something that interests him for whatever reason. I'm sure he gets a lot of questions to the blog that he may not even feel comfortable answering, and maybe he chooses not to answer it. So what I think you? people kind of have to put their thinking caps on and realize it's a business. you know. And Dr. Rasman, while he is a physician, and I do have a, a great amount of respect for what he's accomplished over years, he's also a businessman. And he is putting out information for public consumption that he wants out there. And he's making the choices. And whatever the choice, you know, I don't know what his reasoning is. You know, I think it's difficult to speculate. I understand your disappointment, well, but I don't think people should, you know, uh, you know, hang on his every word because he's just a guy like everybody else. He's a guy that decided to, he goes to the meetings. He's a good doctor. He goes to the meetings. He gleaned what he gleaned from the meeting, and he decided to write what he chose to write about, right or wrong. You know, I, I just don't think people should put so much emphasis on what Bill Rasman is blogging about because it, it, it's not the gospel. Yeah, but, you know, I was going to say this out of my next topic. You know, my impression was to leave out, the, talk about nonsense and to leave out the most important, critical parts of that meeting to me he seemed pretty, you know, nonsense. Well, but Joe, Joe, I don't, I don't want to, you know, I'm not saying that you're wrong, but I mean, maybe what's critical to him isn't critical to you. Maybe he thought that the critical information was about the, you know, the different tools that are now being used in hair transplantation, uh, talking more about follicular unit extraction, things of that nature. Maybe that's what, what he believed was critical. This is what he believed was cutting edge information that his readers want to know about. So you know, I'm, not here, I'm not here to defend Bill Raspin, but I'm just trying to be logical about it. You know, I mean, in his view, that's what was important. So I guess his opinion is something that could really help someone by giving them a significant amount of hair. I guess in his opinion, 
isn't really it's not really important. So you know, I'm pretty pretty upset but, about this whole thing. Look, I can't. I don't know. I can't tell you what his opinion is, but uh, you know, maybe he just wasn't impressed. And by the way, Andrew, I, I, I'm looking at your feed now, and it's perfect. So I definitely think I probably need to change the aspect ratio on the Ball Truth feed itself. I don't know. Well, I can't. I can't see a difference. Really? Yeah, Maybe it's look, just on my phone. Look, let me see something. It might be. Well, that might be it. Look, I got. I got it in widescreen here, and it looks fine. I have both That's you and me here. Well, if you don't mind, guys, a few moments, a few more things to report on for the audience. Yeah, go ahead. Do I have to my report on opening? Of course you do, Joe. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm gonna have to chastise Andrew tonight. The Ball Truth Report with Joe from Staten Island. Well, this, uh, this doctor in Japan at the Akai Institute, now he starts his comment on this, is allegedly, allegedly using the HSC from histogen. He's been ejecting the patients. Have you heard about this, Vincent? Yeah, and uh, I think you really used the word alleged correctly, uh, I want to congratulate you for that, by the way. But yes, that is that is the word. It is allegedly, and also you have to understand that you know the information that you're getting is information that I would consider to be third-party information or hearsay on the internet. Yes. So, yeah. So I, I I wouldn't, you know, there seems to be some people out there that are voicing disappointment after reading some of the commentary about that. I I don't think that you guys should really necessarily take that information at face value. Just wait and see. Wait to wait till you speak to the scientists. Wait till the scientists speak to us, and and we can really get the real information out there for you guys. All right. Well, one one final uh, piece of real information. Uh, a good friend, David Pytan of uh, Allergen, was getting on TV this week. Like he's really promoting this stuff. He's saying that within the next six months they're going to have the you know preliminaries on phase two, and he, then he wants to immediately go to phase three. Have to send them right, do, do, do me a favor. Did you repeat that in English for everybody? Yes. Uh, David Pycock, the chief uh, officer of um, Allegan Corporation, was talking about the product Latisse, you know, for Bell Fab Wellness this week right. on another uh, show. Right. And he stated that he wants to immediately go to phase three trials within the next six months when the report comes out. On, on the uh, phase two of the uh, lactase trials from Mel Pat Baldus. At this point, from what I read it on the internet, there's no doubt about it. It does grow scalp here, 100%. Well, yeah. What, Listen, dude, we know degree, that, for sure, know. 100%. And we know it's going to be an effective product, and I think that you know they're smart to try to, to push it out to market as soon as possible, especially when they, they may end up having kind of a limited time frame to, to really... Uh, you know, uh, get a lot of sales for this product. And listen, when I say limited, it may be five years. Five years is a long time, especially if it's an agent that is going to be possibly significantly more effective than minoxidil. You know, and especially if it, it, the fact that it's new, I mean, people are going to flock to it. People, you know, will, will go in the direction of a new product as opposed to sticking with something that's been around for 20 years like, like minoxidil. And give that a shot before, in my view, before they give Rogan a shot because it's going to get a lot of press. Of course. Well, even if it, say fog or histogen or adherent is in the market in the next two to three years, people will still buy the, the uh, allergen, allergen product because obviously be much easier to attain and much much cheaper and much you know much less intensive on the patient's part to go through all these other treatments. It'll be much easier. To you know, Again, Joe, you're becoming more lucid as the years go by. I don't know what it is. Maybe you're not that. drinking on I the air. That. But yeah, that's a that's a good point. You know, it's going to be a, a product that's going to be you know people are going to have easy access to. It's going to be relatively inexpensive compared to you know uh, uh, using one of these you know new cell based technologies, it's like a cellular hair transplant. And uh, for the guys that are starting early, and for the women that are starting early in the process, it, it, this is something that might actually help to prevent you know, the progression of their hair loss, at least temporarily. So you're right. I mean, I think what people need to understand, all the guys that are losing their minds and battling it out on baldtruthtalk.com, they have to understand that you guys are so lucky. There are so many more options now than I ever had 
when I started to deal with hair loss. And Joe, you were in a worse position than me because you started before me and you're a little older than I am. And, you know, I mean, I had, we had nothing. Minoxidil wasn't even FDA approved for hair loss yet. You know, I had my stuff co compounded in a pharmacy with, you know, Lonitin pills, just, you know, basically, uh, you know, uh, compounded with alcohol. And I rubbed that crap in my head. That's how I started treating my hair loss. And I think you were the like same way, Joe. Sure, we lost you. Are you there? Yeah, it was a, like a powdery substance on your hair. I used the same thing. It was like a powder. Oh, yeah. I mean, and you know, so all the guys that are complaining, the young guys that are just, they're so desperate. They're like, oh, my God, it's going to take, you know, when they're thinking about Replicel and, and, and the numbers, you know, at least the estimates are like 2013, 2014, 2015, whatever it is. They think that's the end of the world. Let me tell you guys, 2015 is going to be here in, a, in an instant like that. I snapped too early. I shouldn't be drinking on the air, Joe. But, um, well, the way that I, you know, I, I, think, I, think people a, need to under, I think people need to understand that we didn't have these options. I was very lucky to find Finasteride early on. Uh, basically, almost as soon as it was approved for benign prostate hyperplasia is when I started taking it for hair loss. So I kind of, you know, I jumped in early. I, I, I was desperate enough and had the balls to do it. And I had, you know, knock on wood, uh, you know, tremendous success on the drug with absolutely no adverse side effects that I'm aware of. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm one of the lucky ones, you know, from my generation that was really able to slow down the progression of their hair loss significantly. And uh, I tell these guys, the young guys all the time who are 18, 19, as tough as it is right now, you're going to be the first generation to really be able to reverse this completely. You're going to be the first generation who is really going to be able to you know, kind of feel the pain, you know, the suffering from hair loss, you know, on the short term, but then, you know, uh, not have to deal with it or be able to manage it in a much more effective way. So, you know, it, I, it's a weird thing to say, Joe, but it's probably the best time to start balding, uh, at least right. in, the, in, 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 in our history. That's, uh, that's true. I, I've suffered a lot of years, but I, I, I have finally realized that I will be walking my daughter down a, a wedding aisle on a wedding day with a full head of hair. That I, that's a guarantee. Well, you're not going to be walking your daughter down anywhere if you keep, you know, don't stop, you know, if you, if you don't start taking care of yourself. Well, that's true, too. She may come visit my gravesite. I may have a full head I may be a corpse with a full head of hair. How old is your daughter now? Uh, 17. She's seven. She could end up getting married in, in a couple of years, dude. Well, so what I, happens if your daughter decides like to get married at, at, at 18, 19 years old? Are you, are you, what are you going to Are you going to wear like a hat to her wedding? I'm, I expect that she'll be married for the next three three to five years. And I really expect to be something out there that is going to change my appearance dramatically. Is is your, daughter, your, daughter, your daughter's probably a good-looking girl. Yeah. I, I would imagine, you know. Not bad, not bad. Not bad. So she's probably going to have no trouble uh, meeting a good man. How, how is it going to be when this guy comes to your house, knocks on the door, and has to go up to your fucking bedroom and knock on that door to, to meet you? Are you going to be in like, your bathroom with your hat? But I expect within the next three or five years, we will have more effective treatments. Well, look, at least I might not have a complete fall. I say I'll be semi-normal. You know what I'm saying? I mean, don't you agree that our hypothesis? I, I, I agree with that, but I mean, don't you want to, don't you want to, I'm sorry, I hope I'm not getting in your case, Joe, but it, it bothers me sometimes and I really feel for you. You know, you're telling me your kid is 17, you know, years old. She's probably, you know, interested or she may be dating right now. You don't even know about it, but eventually she's going to want to meet, she's going to want you to meet her boyfriend. Maybe not. Maybe she's going to keep him away from your house because if I, if I were her, I'd probably keep her out of the house, keep my, keep my, uh, well, she, my dates away from you. But, well, she you know, doesn't. I tend to keep most of her friends away from my home. I've noticed that. Well, I mean, come yeah. on. See, if, if your daughter's 17, she knows what the fuck is going on already. She knows there's something wrong with, with, with her dad. Oh, yeah. That's, your, well, that's, of course she does. She knows I'm a, I'm a terrible hell of a sufferer. She, you know, I do have a lot of ancillary, ancillary problems due to that. But do you talk to her? Do you ever spend time with your daughter? Because we talk about Vincent. But do you ever spend time with your daughter? Do you, do you know anything about your daughter, really? Yeah, I know a lot of things about her. 
I don't know. I mean, it's none of my business. But you know. No, I'm saying, but did she talk about her life to you? Did she talk about school? Did she talk about her goals and her dreams or aspirations? No, I told her to, um, you know, do what she thinks is best. I'm not really want to be giving advice at this point in, in time. Okay, let me let me just tell you how you know, and I, I I think I've spoken to you or George spoke to you about this as well. George had, came from a similar background as me, and it's really difficult for a kid when uh, kind of like the parents are not the type to give advice. I had to figure out everything on my own, and sadly, it was like in the park and you know on the streets, you know, with my friends, and you know I really didn't have any guidance. I was like a latch latch key kid. And while my parents did obviously provide for me and my father uh, worked his ass off to send me to a private high school and, you know, and all that stuff, which certainly helped my life. There's no doubt about it. I really didn't have any guidance other than, you know, just like, okay, they put me in school and kind of like left it up to me figuring things out. At, well, so once you, once, so once a kid special. turns 18 okay. and gets let, let loose on, on, in the world, man, and they come from a situation like that, they lose their effing mind. You never know what's going to happen because there is no guidance, man. So no someone's got. I, ho I hope your wife is taking care of things with your daughter. Well, it is. A, I'm too. You know, I, I'm too much involved in this hair loss thing. That's all I think about. It, 24 hours a day, every second of the day, and it's hard for me to dispatch myself on to any other issues besides this. You understand my you have, position? You have such an interesting way of uh, uh, articulating your point, dude. Dispatch, well, that's a great word. Uh, well, let's I give up the phone number. It's 718-717-2200. Uh, Go ahead. Language. Say that again? I've been told by several people that I do have a good command of the English language. Well, you definitely have an interesting command of it, I'll tell you that. Phone number 718-717-2200. 718-717-2200. 2200. Uh, I don't know how many calls Andrew can take uh, if the phones are working or not. Is, is, is anybody on the line? No, nobody's Andrew? on yet. Okay. All right, so one, got, one more comment on, on the piece that I, my research has shown. What's great about this is it works by a totally different me mechanism than Propecia or Rogaine. It's pressed, prostaglandin, you know, it affects the prostaglandin cells in the scalp. So, a person who has had no success with uh, Rogaine or uh, Propecia, this possibly can dramatically change your life. This is most exciting about this drug. It's something totally different than anything, anything that exists exists now. That's true. That's true. So it's, it's going to be like the third agent that is going to be uh, approved by the FDA for, for hair loss, the third drug, which is, I mean, that's extremely exciting. Well, I, I, as, as I've said before, I predicted by, by the, uh, the next six months, doctors will be mixed up. As um, Lumigen, you know, the drug Lumigen, which is by Monoprost, right. goes off patent, there will be generic versions, which will, will be like 90% cheaper than Latisse. And yeah, as you know, the so-called, I use the word so-called, you know, physicians, will be mixing up their own batches and will be selling it on the internet or in their offices. That's, absolutely. That's they absolutely will. You know, I, you know, I was able to take a little time off, you know, uh, what was it, on Friday, to go to an event, and I'm, I'm switching gears here because I think this is interesting and a lot of guys probably want to hear about it. Uh, Andrew Zarian, guys from Queens, had an event at the place called the Triple Crown Bar and Grill. Uh, down the old Fur District on 29th Street and 7th Avenue, actually right across the street from WWRL Radio. And I got there, I guess, about 8 o'clock to, you know, uh, they invited me down there, so I, I just needed to take a break and have a couple of drinks. And uh, they had a comedy show. And I got to tell you, Andrew, man, Kunal really pulled that off. Oh, he did a great I job. Was, it, it, was, it was incredible. But again, my sickness, because this is what I do, I'm looking at all the Norwoods, and I just couldn't believe that it was like a sea of Norwoods. When I got up, we were sitting in the front row. I went back to get a drink, and I just kind of looked, looked at everybody. And, like, I would say three out of four guys had a significant balding spot or thinning spot uh, on their crowns, the guys that are sitting down. You were, like one of the only, you were like one of the few guys that wasn't balding at this place. How did my hair look? 
your hair is phenomenal. It's actually sick. All right, that, it really that's, is. That's all that matters. It's 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 ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Really is. But I just want to say, you know, Canal killed. I was actually really impressed uh, with his, you know, comedic abilities and the fact that you guys put the show together uh, the way that you did. And you had like, what, what, what was the name of the headliner? Uh, Jim Jeffries. Yeah, I mean, it was impressive. Actually, I mean, I, this guy's a real comedian. Not that Canal is, I mean, this is a guy that has, I guess, been on television a lot because I've seen him. And it was very, very impressive event, man. So I just want everyone to know that uh, if you ever want to meet me in person, probably the only way is going to be drunk at one of these events. I, probably. I don't know. Maybe not. Well, Joe, Joe met me on his own. I was going to tell you guys very quickly. I was in a city on Friday. I had to see my physicians. And believe it or not, I was within five minutes of that area. You're kidding me. When was this? This week? Friday. He should have came. I'm very familiar with Triple Crown because my physician's office is about five blocks from there. They used to be Chinese restaurants about five minutes from Penn Station. It's an Irish bar, Triple Crown. Well, let me, let me tell you something, though, Joe. I mean, I think I'm at a point in my life now where, and I, I love hanging out with the guys from Queens, and, you know, this is a great event. But it, it's, it's difficult for me to hang at a place where, you know, there is vomit in the urinals. You know, I think I'm too old to be at a place like that. There was vomit in the urinals. Yes, there was. I, I think noticed that I, it. I think that I'm past that stage in my life to hang out in bars where guys are vomiting in urinals. I don't know. Maybe it's just but, me. I just think I'm a little too old for that shit. But I just thought Ben was in contact because I would have definitely appeared there because I was within five minutes of there. Isn't that strange? Murphy's Law has it. Never fails, right? That actually wouldn't have been very interesting. Uh, I didn't even think about it because I, I decided to go the last minute. And Andrew um, Skyped me and said, listen, you know, I'm going to be down there. If you can get away, you should, you should try to come. And I wasn't even 100% sure if I was going to go. And I kind of surprised these guys. And it was fun. You know, I met a lot of guys from GFQ. Uh, Kunal killed. Uh, but it was, it was really interesting. And I could, tell, I could tell you this, Andrew. A lot of guys didn't come up to me, but they were looking at me. All these Norwoods, they knew all, all the GFQ Norwoods, all the fans that, you know, not part of the GFQ network, but the guys that watch you guys. And they had they had questions. I'm surprised they didn't get drunk and start to you know talk to me more. But I'll tell you, they you all think? knew who you were. Because a lot of them were fans. When, when Spencer walked in, uh, you were like a superstar. No, I wasn't. No, he was. Joe, you, no, you had talking. to see this. Spencer walks into the place and it's in his basement. There was like 80 people there. It was packed uh, as, I, as I try to fumble around to take this phone call. Hang on. It was packed. Here. Hang on one second. Now, now, see yeah. what you did? And then now I missed it. Great. You try calling back again. Uh, it was packed to the point where you couldn't even move. Spencer comes downstairs and people start screaming, Spencer! He was like a rock star. Only one person did that. Dude. What time did you get there? And she was a midget. She was, yeah. So. And one leg. So. Yeah. No, I got there, I got there right, right before showtime. And what was funny is, you know, I got there right before showtime, and uh, Andrew's like, let's go upstairs and get a couple of quick drinks. We go upstairs. Canal comes up. He's all nervous. He's like, he didn't want to start the show without us. And I kind of felt bad, Andrew. I thought that, like, maybe we were holding things up. I just, oh, I just, want, I just wanted a drink. And by the way, you know, Andrew decides to sit a guy with a lacquered comb over in the front row of a comedy show. It's not my fault. I, I'm like, oh my god, dude! I'm, I'm I, these guys are gonna, they're gonna annihilate me. You were fine. Well, luckily they were first. Fine. First of all, no, we were sitting in like the like the corporate seats, so everybody knew who we were, so nobody was messing around with us. That's true. But there was that one blonde comedian chick. Yeah, she was. She wanted you. Well, but she may have wanted me, but I caught her looking up. She did like the double take of the hair, trying to figure it out, you know, which totally makes me feel uncomfortable. So next time you got to warn people about that. Tell them, just say, don't look at the hair. What was that movie? Is that Cheech and Chong? Uh, you're too young for this, man. Where uh, Cheech is just telling Chong, listen, you know, whatever you do, don't look at my cousin's neck. He had like some sort of goiter around his neck. And, of course, the first thing that Chong does is look at his neck, and the guy's pretty upset. Anyway, that's the way that I felt. Did anybody else call in? 
What's going on with your phone? Some, somebody called. No, somebody called. And by the time, you know, you went to me. And by the time I got the phone, they hung up. All right, guys. I'm going to. I know this isn't my regular number. I know you guys are probably calling my home right now. It, you know, the studio in California. But call this number. It's 718-717-2200. That's 718-717-2200. I think Andrew is able to take multiple calls now. He kind of jerry-rigged that. So uh, feel free to give us a call. This is the Hair Law Show. I know it's a little un unorthodox, and you know I'm just trying to uh, uh, you know keep you guys abreast of everything that's been going on in my life, obviously, and going on in the world of hair laws. Uh, but I know that you guys are probably tuning in, saying, "What the what the hell is this?" Uh, there was a guy last week when we were trying to do the show this way. We had some some issues initially, and what did he say, Andrew? He's like, what the fuck is wrong with the show? What the fuck is going on? Why does the show look like shit? Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing it off my laptop, my Mac Pro laptop. Those guys. are your boys. A... Was a lot of people wearing baseball hats in there, though? It's a world yeah, like this. Uh, I'm just, of... I'm putting my, go ahead, Joe. Was a lot of people wearing baseball hats in that, in, in that club? No, well, there were a couple of people uh, wearing baseball hats. I, you know, I wouldn't call it a club. It really is like a, it's kind a restaurant, a, a Irish there. bar. Um, it was really ultra hot, man. It must have been like 110 degrees. And, you know, I mean, I'm telling you, I wasn't joking. You know, I w walked in to take a piss and there was vomit and urinal. And that's always a bad sign. That's a bad sign. I'm it was too a old restaurant upstairs, a small restaurant upstairs. It used to be a Chinese restaurant next door. Right, Dude, but... I, know the, I, I know the neighborhood well. I worked in the neighborhood as a kid. You know, I mean, I, that's the old fur district, man. I mean, the neighborhood has changed so much. And I, I did my show from W, uh, uh, w um, uh, EVD, which was at uh, 333 7th Avenue, and then WWRL at, when they took over EVD Studios. So, I mean, I, I, I know the area well. I know the, uh, the Mustang, what is it, uh, Mustang Harry's? Mustang Harry's, and then there's Mustang Sally. Mustang Sally's, yeah. So... But yeah, there's a lot wow. of Norwoods, and you know, I, I'm always a concern, especially like when I go out and if people know who I am, that they're going to corner me. And I will tell you that really nobody did. I mean, they were very polite. No one was was asking me questions about their hair, uh, and everyone made me feel very welcome, which is uh, it's, it's pretty rare because yeah, I can go to like you know some party in Beverly Hills, and uh, I, I become like the center of attention because everyone wants to know what's going on. What they can do. First question is, what about Bosley? I'll tell you, Bosley's marketing is unbelievable. I mean, they've become part of the fabric of our culture. And they know it. You know, any, anytime someone thinks of hair loss, the first thing they think is Bosley or the hair club. Well, about, about 7.30, I was at Whole Foods that night. I like, I wanted to, to get something to eat at Whole Foods. You familiar Whole Foods, five minutes down the block? Uh, Whole Foods? Yeah, it's five minutes. I'm very familiar with I'm on. very familiar with Whole Foods. I mean, at least in Los Angeles, it's one of my favorite markets. I mean, there's one right on Seventh Avenue. That's what, that's where um, five minutes of Penn Station. That's where Triple Crown is. Like, yeah, right. I've triple, been there, tri triple Crown is on Seventh between uh, 28th and 29th. And that's where I was at Seventh about 7:30 Friday night. Isn't that nice? Isn't that sad? That's so funny. He was right there. It's not that sad. We'll figure out a better venue. I, I think you would have been pretty uncomfortable there, Joe, to tell you the truth. It was hot. It, it was, was crowded. It was hot meeting with Andrew, you know. I, it was hot. It was crowded. And you're claustrophobic. I, I don't think you would have had a good time. Well, I would have stayed there 10 minutes, actually, and left. I just would have said hello and, uh, you know, made an appearance. Dude, no way. You would have gone so loaded. I know you. We, I would have had a, we, had, we would have had to shovel you into a cab. I could have introduced him to all my high school ex-girlfriends that look awful now. No, I wouldn't have done it. I would have seen it like yeah. half an hour, really, because I, was, I took medical tests that day and I couldn't drink so much. That's oh, what I was doing in the city. You know, I yeah, but, but you, 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 took the, you took the test that day. You probably would have had drinks afterward. What kind of test did you have done? Well, I had tests because I, I suffer from uh, a pancreatic and kidney cyst. Possibly cancerous, they think, but I'm not really too concerned about that. But, I'm um, really sorry to hear that. Now, why aren't you concerned about that? You're just talking about your your daughter getting married. You're talking about, you know, I mean, you have kids and a family. 
Yeah, well, I'm not really, I'm not, wasn't really that, con- you know, actually that concerned about it. But I, you know, I was, the, of course, the, you know, uh, the, the test was over. Then I went down there about se- about seven thirty, and I, I'm just really devastated right now that I missed you guys. I really. Well, don't be devastated. We're going to figure out a way we can actually have dinner together, Joe, so you can have more time. Uh, and like I said, it really was, I was not planning on going at all. Uh, Andrew Skyped me, and I was at basically my dad's hospital bed at the side, side of his bed. We were hanging out. I was there for about nine and a half hours that day, and my dad's girlfriend was there. I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go and have a couple of drinks. i got to get the hell out of here. And uh, I'm glad that she was there because if she wasn't there, I wouldn't have been able to leave. You know, I'm going to tell you something interesting about the hospital. You really need to have an advocate when you're in the hospital. My dad had a couple of roommates. One guy was a 48-year-old guy who had MS. He had like four kids and a wife and and his mother. The only person that visited him consistently was his mother, and she didn't hang out for that long. His daughter came with like his granddaughter, and you know, I mean, 48 years old, he had a granddaughter already. And uh, they stayed for like 45 minutes, and it was like they made it like like it was a big deal. Oh my god! And my father's the second roommate is actually a doctor. He's a pathologist, really interesting guy. And he's got a kid that lives in D.C. He's got uh, actually his daughter lives uh, in another country. I'm not even going to say where, but and you know, I don't understand it. I guess people have lives, and they're unwilling to stop their lives. You know, to to advocate for their loved ones, but I, I just, I'm, I'm a different type of cat, you know? Spence, I can't you call imagine. Him. All right, so let's take a call. Call her, young hey, man. Hello? Hey, Hello? who's this? Hello. It's Johnny. Johnny, what's happening, man? How are you? Johnny, go Ohio. Good, how are you doing? Dude, we're doing we're doing all right, hanging in there, man. I'm glad Andrew's able to get this thing working. Yeah, I'm having some technical difficulties on my end here too. Uh, how's your dad, Spencer? I didn't get to hear your opening uh, statements. My my dad is hanging in there, man. He's actually, believe it or not, he's a strong mother effer. I mean, he's pulling through this, and uh, at the age of almost 88, people were shocked that you know he had so many different issues going on simultaneously. Uh, and we actually think we're going to be able to get him discharged into a, a rehab sometime midweek this week. Well, my thoughts and uh, prayers are, are with you. I just want you to know that because I know what you're going I, through. It's uh, it's tough. I know that, Johnny, and I really appreciate that. I really do. How's things in the in, in your world? Yeah, we're getting by. You know, could be a lot worse. Could be a lot better. You know. Fair to Midland, I guess you could say. Yeah, uh, what's going on? Any any hair decisions in your near future? Well, not right at the uh, at the moment. I've been I was trying to listen to what you were uh, and Joe were talking about with um, I think it was histogen and some other things, but my feed just kept cutting in and out. So now you try you try to you could actually probably if you just wanted to listen to it, you can probably just listen on uh, iTunes Radio, right, Andrew? Yes. So, you know, sometimes if you're having problems with your connection, you might just want to listen to the audio. You could also listen on, on Stitcher.com and, uh, okay. you know. And, and on the GFQ website. If you go to GFQLaw.tv, we have a, uh, an audio feed right there. That's right. Actually, we have an audio feed. I was feed having trouble with the audio feed. Through, too. I tried that. It, it didn't seem the – I was getting lagged there, too. So it may be something on my end. It's possible, man. It's possible. So what? So what? So what else is going on? You want to? You, so you didn't hear anything about histogen or or trichoscience or what we were talking about? No, I didn't hear that. Uh, okay. Well, basically, in a nutshell, uh, what I'm trying to let everybody know is that there's you know a frenzy on Ball Truth Talk about how come in from there. You know, we we haven't gotten information out to the public about what was presented at the ISHRS conference in Alaska. A couple of reasons. One, I'm a little busy right now. But two, you know, it's not information that is, you know, uh, necessarily time sensitive. You know, we're going to get it out there. Uh, we're going to have uh, Craig Zering is going to provide uh, a, a presentation for us. And we're also going to have, have him on the program. So we're going to get some really up to date and up to the minute histogen information. Uh, I'm going to spe- be speaking with David Hall again from Replicell, 
I may actually be speaking with him next week. I had to postpone an interview that I had scheduled with him, but hopefully we can get this done next week. And uh, I'm going to be speaking with Jerry Cooley, and he's also going to be providing a presentation for us on his uh, findings with ACEL this year. So that's, you know, really the important stuff. And, you know, I, I could still get Ken Wachenek on the show, uh, but like I, like I always tell Joe, Ken is a little concerned about getting, putting his, having his back put, up, put against the wall about a timeline. And, uh, you know, uh, we may not get the answers that we want if we have him on the program. You know I do it, too. You know what? And you know I would, I would, I would demand a timeline from him. You know that, right? Right. So I mean, you know, maybe I can do something recorded with Ken. You know, and just you know, bear with me, guys. You know, I need to get back to L.A. Hopefully, you know, get my dad in rehab. I can take a week out to fly back to L.A. I'm gonna have to come back here, and it's very possible that I'm gonna have to have Andrew build me a little studio here, uh, and I may be, you know, depending on the situation kind of just flying back and forth a lot uh, dealing with the situation. And I just don't want to have to continue to do the show uh, via Skype just on my laptop. So, GFQ we'll will build you a studio. Uh, you're doing a good job. Oh, thanks, man. Well, Andrew's, you know, it's, it's really, it's Andrew's he is thing. He's doing a great job. Yeah. So, uh, but your, your connection is pretty screwed up. You just, I just had this really weird feedback in my ear. I'm, I think I may be deaf now, actually. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. But the, the good news is I can't hear your chair squeaking through Skype. Night's still young. <laughs> so what's happening with George? George has disappeared, man. Has George tried to call you, uh, Andrew? No, I haven't seen a call from George in uh, in weeks. George disappeared. Bro. I'm a little worried about George. Like, I wonder if he stopped painting his head or something and went underground. Maybe he doesn't know. Maybe he doesn't know we're on yet. Well, he did say, you know what, George did say he was having internet issues the last time, um, the last time he was on. So he might be having something going on. That's true, Johnny. You got to stop breathing in your mic, man. It's creeping me out. It's really loud. Hey, what are you doing, baby? Johnny. What are you doing, sweet Johnny. baby? What the hell is going on, Joe? What is that, baby? Andrew, help me out here. I don't even know what's going on. I'm, I'm, Joe, I'm Joe is. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know it's fired it up. Slightly just, disturbed. Just, <laughs> oh, you guys, may, you guys may be the most right tonight. Dude, who are you talking to? Who's baby? You know. <laughs> you. That's my, nickname, my, that's my nickname for my wife. You call your wife baby? I think that's no, great, but, but it's like you know, when I when I hear about your relationship over the years, it definitely doesn't seem to be the type of relationship where you would have that type of terms of endearment, you know. No, I was told my son actually, babe. He told me he'd be up for um, another fifteen or so uh, until nine fifteen this evening. But I oh. tell you, you and Andrew B really made me an emotional basket case tonight. I'm gonna have to be sedate myself after the show. Why? Why? Because I was so oh. close to you guys, I, I really, I'm just hurt that staff or someone didn't contact me. I, I, I was so, I was so close, but yet so far. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Come on, Joe, man. I, I, I can look at my, at my Skype records, man. I mean, he was just like, dude, you know, we're doing this thing. You want to come? And I really did not plan on going. Joe, after, I have. Be, I'm sorry. After being in a hospital for. You know, with with my dad for so many days, I was just like, you know what, I got to get the hell out of here. Joe, I have well, no I was, contact I was information. Andrew, uh, last week, you know, the experts that actually wanted to come to the hospital visit you and your dad, but I felt that that would be intrusive. That was my impression, and Andrew agreed. Well, that's really nice of you. My dad is probably not a fan of people seeing him this way. Right. You know, you I mean, I had uh, uncomfortable. My best friend, who I grew up with, actually came by. And my dad knows him, and he was a little weirded out by that. So, you weird out by I, I just, I just kind of pictured, you like, you know, know Andrew coming and over with, like, Jess and Canal, and Canal be cracking jokes on my dad's bedside. I, huh. I was really hoping that wouldn't happen. Joe, I have no contact information for you. If, if you send me an email, I would definitely get in touch with you. The problem is I have no way of ever getting in touch Andrew, with you. Andrew, you have my, my, my cell number. You know that. 
Oh, uh, I have it on Skype, yeah. I do. I do, then. Me? Andrew, I was a cop for 20 years, you know. I, I, have, a, I have some great investigative techniques, and you know that I know you have my number. No, I have it on Skype, but I, I never got an email from you. I wish. You know what? You should send me an email with the phone number so I know. I won't even know where to send you an email. I'll tell you. Right, listen, I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, I want you to. I want you to make a promise right now, Andrew. Next yeah. time, yes. you guys do the, do a comedy thing in Manhattan, maybe at Triple Crown again. Let Joe know. I've I've invited I Joe a thousand say, times. Say, right, like ahead of time because I need you know I happen to be in the city that night. That's just so devastating. That I was actually five minutes from there. That's Joe, so I've in, I've invited you to the cup. Please come to the strip club. You could eat whatever you want. You could drink whatever you want. It's all on us. Wow. That's that's in, including young ladies. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure we could work something out with that. <laughs> All right. I'm not in the business of pimping, but I, I'm sure I could work something out. No, they do well, like I, two for one special. I'm flattering away that I was so close to meeting you guys, you know, and yet so far that it just probably sends me into more of a depression this evening. I'm not so, so Joe, something. what do you think it would have been like? I mean, how do you think you would have reacted meeting all the guys and, you know, hanging out with these, you know, in a crowd? Because it was a really crowded place. And honestly, it was a very young crowd. I definitely felt like I had to go back into the bar. These guys went to take a train and it was pouring. I mean, it was like really raining. I couldn't get a cab. So I'm like, you know, I'm going to go back into the bar to have one more drink. And I see Canal there at the bar, you know, doing his thing, you know, chatting it up with some girls, and I just walked over to the bar, ordered a drink, I tapped him on the shoulder, I said, listen, dude, I just want to tell you, you did a great job, you really killed, and he was like, hey, Spence, and in my mind, it's, it was almost like, you know, strange old dude at the bar, you know, he had to introduce me to his friends and the girls that he was talking to, so, well, Spence, I don't know how, actually, I I don't know how comfortable he would be. I give you a hug, and Andrew a hug, I would stay for 10 minutes, so I know it wouldn't be an intimate thing, because obviously all the crowds there, and I would have left, just to make that in contact, you know what I'm saying, man? Yeah, well, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure next time that that happens, and I have to tell you, Joe, uh, unfortunately, and maybe fortunately, maybe it's, you know, serendipitous that I'm going to be... Or you may, I guess that it's not the right it's not the right use of uh, serendipitous, but maybe there's a reason why I am going to be in New York more often. Obviously, I'm going to be taking care of my father, but you know who knows? Maybe it's to hang out with you guys. Maybe there will be some business opportunities that I might not have had if I stayed in L.A. Whatever you know. So just know that you're probably going to be uh, have the opportunity to see a lot more of me because I know I'm going to be on the East Coast a lot this year. Well, I like well, to see note, at least once, uh, man, you know. And you and me there, you know. Uh, hold on. What was that, What was that, Johnny? Uh, how is uh, Yvette doing with all this? Apparently, Yvette, Yvette is finding herself. <laughs> She's having a great time. <laughs> She's so, been out with the girls. You know. <laughs> Spence, you have a very... caller. Do you want Do you want to take this? Sure, but she's become very introspective, and she's finding herself. And I, I think that uh, you know maybe the separation is, uh, is is good for her. But you know, I, I do Skype her, and I miss Hello. her terribly. And hey, who's Hello. this? Hello. This is Keisha. Who's this? I'm done with her. I hung up. All right. Yeah, let's take another one. That wasn't her. That was like a ten year old boy. There you go. Take another hey. call. Hey, who's this? You're on the air. Hey, this is Gary from Pennsylvania. Hey, Gary, yeah, Gary from Pennsylvania. What can I do for you? Um, well, I just wanted to talk to you about my transplant experience and uh, maybe ping you guys about what I should do moving forward. So Yeah, that's what we're here for. I, uh, I had 1,200 grass, FUE, non-shaven with John Cole back in December of 2008. And uh, went pretty well. Um, nobody knew I had anything done. And here I am three years later. I'd like to add some more. Three beers later or three years later? Three years later. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I'm glad to hear you had a good experience with John. And it's interesting that you had the non-shave in FUE because a lot of people in the industry don't believe that that could be done effectively. John Cole is is one person in my view that really broke that mold and and has had uh, a lot of success stories like yourself. Right, I think the 
I read on his website some of the marketing material about you can go back to work the next day. I mean, obviously that's pretty optimistic. Yes. But I was back at work in 10 days, you know, with the hair combed a little bit forward over my temples with absolutely no issue at all. That's great. It worked out really well. That's yeah, great. So, okay, so you want to have more work done. Well, so what's the question? So, I mean, I'm not necessarily, I, I could have more work done. I'm, a can, I'm still a candidate for strip. Um, I went and talked to uh, Dr. Feller in New York last year. He said, yeah, okay. no problem. He could do a thousand strip. I talked to Dr. Pistone in Philadelphia. He said, you know, I can easily, even with the FUE work you've had done, I could easily do two, like just kind of projecting forward how much potential donor do I have left. Um, you know, maybe up to 5,000 graphs from two strips if I wanted to do that. But kind of, I just started listening to the show a few weeks ago and I'm hearing all this news about cell-based therapy and, you know, bimatoprost and all this other stuff coming out. And uh, what do you guys think? Should I even bother kind of doing it? I, I had a few weeks off I could take in December and, you know, have a small procedure done to fill in the areas that I think I would want to fill in. Or I could just kind of wait till next year. Well, and, well let uh, me ask you. Let me ask you this thing: What's your life like now? Are you are you functioning well? Are you happy with the way you look for the most part? Do you have a girlfriend? Are you married? I mean, how is getting a like transplant that, now yeah. going to affect your life? Um, no, I, I'm, I'm married. Um, I'm able to kind of, you know, use a little bit of topic and some thickening fiber type gel stuff to, uh, to, yeah, I mean, I cosmetically look, look fine. I think, um, right. you know, yeah, part of the anxiety comes from, I, 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 uh, I did experience side effects from finasteride, you know, right. many years ago and, and got off of that. My hair's spinning very slowly. It's like this insidious thing that just doesn't stop, you know, but, um, yeah, I, I think I could, I feel like I could hold out for, you know, depending on, if things take a turn for the worse, I feel like I could go for another two or three years kind of playing the charade of, you know, topic and, uh, you know, spending 15 minutes cleverly hiding my forehead with my hair. Dude, I've been playing the charade for 20 years, you know? So, I mean, if, if you can deal with it and you're married and you're able to go out into the world and live your life feeling comfortable with the way that you look, <clears throat> excuse me, then I think then, uh, you know, hair transplants are always going to be there. I would say wait because you've already had one successful procedure that's helped you uh, get to the point where you've, you're able to make yourself look good and feel comfortable. You can have another procedure, uh, but what happens if you have a uh, less than optimal procedure? If something happens, uh, how would that affect your life? Would you be able to deal with that? You're also considering having going from an FUE to having a strip. While I still believe that strip is a gold standard as far as being able to get the most bang for your buck and getting a really full looking head of hair, um, you haven't gone that route yet. Right now you don't have that linear scar and you're not cut and you, you're living a relatively comfortable life. You feel pretty confident from what you're telling me with the way you're able to make yourself look. So. And, and let me put this out there, and everyone knows this. I make money. Part of my living is, uh, you know, what I do with the uh, International Alliance of Hair Restoration Surgeons. Doctors who are accepted into the organization pay us an annual screening fee. So it's really not my best interest to say avoid surgery. But everyone in my organization knows that. Uh, I always let people know that surgery really is uh, should be saved as a last resort. And if you're comfortable in your own skin and you can wait, I say wait. Yeah, I, I can wait. I mean, part of the, I think, anxiety and, you know, weighing the pros and cons of waiting or going forward is, you know, when I had my procedure in 2008, kind of reflecting on that after I started to, to see the growth come in and I was able to style my hair nicely again, you know, I always had that, like, what the hell did I wait so long for? Oh, yeah. You know I mean? It's so, a great feeling. I mean, you, you had a successful hair transplant. You know, the likelihood of you having another successful hair transplant is pretty high. But it, it, how much is, uh, let's, let's try to, you know, weigh out, you know, the pros and cons. I mean, it, 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 how much do you think it's going to benefit you 
to get another 2,000 graphs right now in your life. Do you think it's going to change your perception of yourself and your life that dramatically? I don't, I, I don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, you know, I know what it, what it felt like to have my successful procedure. I, I see, I'm, I'm noticing my hair in, in the parts that, you know, I, I have a persistent forelock. I had grass up into the temples to kind of connect the forelock back with the mid scalp a little bit. And I see that, that forelock right. getting a little bit thinner. And I think that like, Hey, you know, all my hair loss has been in the front. You know, there's a part, there's a small part of me that says I could get like a thousand. I, I, you know, when I talked to Dr. Cole recently, he said I could just pull a bunch of twos because he did a lot of ones in my front. So I could just right. pull like 500 twos and threes and thicken that area up and you should be good for a long time. Well, then why, well, I'm just curious why you're not considering, if you, if you are considering the surgery, why wouldn't you just go back to your original surgeon? Because the, the value proposition of a strip is pretty enticing. You know what I mean? I think. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I say this, man. Honestly, I think that you, you're coming from a good place because you've had a good experience, but, you know, you don't want to have hair greed. That, that is the downfall of a lot of transplant patients. So, you know, you didn't go strip originally. You know, you didn't go to strip route originally. Uh, so you didn't really go for like, the, you know, the large mega session when you went in into it. I think because you saw what 2,000 graphs can do for you, you're probably thinking, well, you know, Christ, I can get even more and I'm going to look that much better, which is a strong possibility, but there's also a possibility of you looking worse for a while. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, it's just, and I'm also the type of guy that if I've done well with, one physician or, you know, having one type of procedure or whether it's any product or service, I usually stay with them. And look, I recommend a lot of doctors and John yeah. Cole is one of them. But, you know, to me, if you had a good experience, you already have that doctor patient relationship. Uh, there, there's at least in my view, I would probably go in that direction if you planned on having another surgery. And that's not to say that you wouldn't have an outstanding procedure done with Feller or uh, you mentioned Pristone or anybody else uh, that we recommend. But, you know, you already have the relationship. He already knows your, you know, your needs, and he's already fulfilled at least, you know, one aspect or, you know, the initial aspect of your hair restoration. Uh, that's probably the direction I would go in. But honestly, and I'm maybe speaking in circle, circles here, trying to get back to the point, I don't even know if it's necessary at this point. If you, if you think you could wait a, at least a year, then wait. See what's happening. You know, the surgery is you know, always going to be there. And especially since you're wearing makeup, you know. I mean, it gives you so much more leeway and so much more to work with. A lot of guys, they won't wear the topic or the, or the couvre or the dermatch match. For whatever reason, they're, you know, uh, uncomfortable doing that. I'm not one of those guys. I'm very comfortable doing it, and I talk about it all the time. It, lets, it allows me to go out, in, you know, into the world feeling pretty good about myself. I think they're great products. Yeah, right, absolutely. Sure. And so uh, one last kind of point I'll make here before I let you guys yeah. go is, you know, thinking about the state of, of flux with kind of what doc, how doctors are applying a cell to FUE procedures and PRP and, and those kinds of things. Um, I still don't feel like I have enough information to know if that A is like, is it worth the money? And you know, does it really? Um, it, it, it feels like there's still a lot of learning going on right now in the industry about there is. how ACL and PRP can be um, applied to FUE procedures in terms of helping the donor area heal. Um, right. I feel like there's some stuff that will be learned in the next three to six, maybe twelve months that I might benefit from. I think there's some stuff that's been learned over the last year, past year, that everyone's going to be benefiting from, and we're going to be presenting some of that information in the, in the coming weeks. You're going to see it on Ball Truth Talk and on the Ball Truth website, and you're, you'll hear about it on the program. Uh, with that said, there's a lot of doctors who are kind of jumping on the bandwagon, experimenting at the expense of the patients, and that has happened since the inception of this industry. That's just the way that it is. Uh, there are a handful of guys that, you know, 
uh, once they hear something at a conference, they go out there, they say they're offering it, and then, you know, sometimes they come back and say, oh, sorry, you know, we did it incorrectly. You know, sorry that we charged you, you know, 2500 bucks for this procedure and didn't work out. Uh, and then there are those who are, are really cautious and they, uh, you know, they, they take this science seriously and also the lives of their patients seriously and realize that, look, these guys are coming to me, they're depending on me to hopefully improve uh, not only their appearance but their self-esteem. Uh, I'm going to be very careful, you know, with that. And those are the kind of guys that I really uh, look towards when I'm trying to get the best information to present to you guys. So what I'm trying to say is you're going to see a lot of hype on the Internet. You're going to see a lot of bullshit on doctors, personal websites. Just be mindful and realize that, you know, there's only a handful of guys that are at this time having success with agents like ACEL and, uh, and the use of PRP therapy. Not all people who are or doctors who are you know, using PRP are created equal, in my view. I all right, man. To all this information shakes out before I do anything. I think that you know you sound like you're in a position where you can wait. You're not out there in the bars trying to get laid. You have a wife. You have a life. Uh, you know. You sound like you get. You know. You're you're an articulate. Uh, you know, a guy who sounds like he's really doing his due diligence. So you know, don't do anything knee jerk. Uh, just right. keep listening to the program and. And hopefully, when it's time for you to make that decision, you'll have all the inf information you need to, to make a truly educated decision. Yep. All right, man? Hey, big fan of the show. Thank you very much. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the call. Yeah, for Listen, guys, we're going to uh, – go ahead, Joe. I, I want to be, uh, answer the gentleman's question. Uh, what did his wife think about all this? That was think that has a major impact. What was her opinion on this? That's actually a good question that I, I was remiss in not asking, Joe, and I apologize. But I have a feeling that he sounds like he's a pretty together guy. And, uh, you know. Like, I, like I, me. Like you, yeah, exactly. Uh, at least you still have a sense of humor. But I, I think that, listen, everyone wants their mate to look good. But I think more importantly, they want their mate to feel good about themselves. So the bottom line is I think that... It, most women, especially if they're already married to the guy, you know, they're just going to do whatever. They're, they're going to want whatever is going to make the, the, their husband happy. At least I would hope so. Guys, listen, I know you've been trying to call in. Uh, uh, Andrew cannot pick up the lines uh, right away. Uh, what, why is that, Andrew? Uh, what, how does it work? Yeah, one more caller. Do you want to go to him or do you want to, um, do you want to wait? Break. We know we, we'll t I'll, we'll take the call and then I'll take a break. All right, let's take this call. Hey, who's this? You're on the air, man. Hey, Spence, what's up? Oh, Nate, what's happening, man? How are you? Not much, man. I'm I'm just I'm just chilling out. What about you? Yeah, you know, just doing a little show here, bro. Yeah, I I I actually had a question for you about your father. Sure. How's he doing? My father is doing much better, thanks. A lot better for going to pull week. through this one. He's going to live to fight another another day. Uh, well, 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 what is it? Just old age, or it's old age coupled with you know a lot of different processes that are happening <laughs> in his body, you know, and uh, some of some of which were just not discovered until he was hospitalized. Yeah. So, you know, basically he's like a, you know, a walking science experiment at this point. The guy's on so much medication, it's, it's unreal. But, you know, it's amazing what they can do. And I, you know, I want to actually give a shout out to, uh, uh, you know, maybe I shouldn't because then people are going to go find, find out where he is. But uh, all the nurses who have been taking care of my father on his floor, uh, these are unbelievable people. Unbelievable, dedicated people. I mean... They basically sign up to be like knee deep in shit and vomit. That's what they do, and whatever else they're doing, you know, for for patients, it's unreal. They're heroes. Real. It's unreal. What was that? They're heroes. They're heroes. Absolutely, they are the unsung heroes. And you know, the doctors obviously do a great job, but the the real bread and butter, in my view, of hospitals are are, are the nursing staff. And as frustrating as it can be to somehow sometimes get attention, 
uh, in this particular hospital, it's been unbelievable. I mean, I've, uh, I gotta tell you, the nurses my dad has are cute. So, I mean, I wish you could see better to really enjoy that. <laughs> so, well, well, yeah. well, at least we know that his hormones are still intact. That's true. That's true. Which is, well, right, which is a good yeah, thing. Go I, mean, I, mean, I mean, at least the guy has a little bit of life in him. He does. He still has a little bit of life in him. He's going to be 88 years old. You know, it's, it's funny because when they ask his birthday and he says, like, you know, born in 1923, and he's a, a lot of these nurses are pretty young, and they're just like, I mean, it's like, it's so wild to them. You know, these girls are born in, like, 1980. You know, or nineteen. You know, how when were you born, Nate? Like nineteen ninety something. Nineteen ninety six. Holy cow! I feel that's old. Jeez, un- that's unbelievable. I feel old by that. No, 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 but that's not even the worst part about me. I mean, the like the main worst part is like I get told that I'm like twenty, like late twenties, early thirties, like at times. Well, you're and a big dude. I mean, when me I saw bad. you on camera, you do not look like you're a 15 year old kid. I mean, you look like a man. You know, the sad part and about sure this sounded either. But I mean, still, I mean, I mean, I mean, I get called that I'm a pedophile all the time. Why on on Stickham? Because you're you're, you're on people in people's yeah, rooms. Uh, yeah, yeah, like Stickham or like. Okay, here's an example. Like, I went into uh, Aeropostale today because they had a sale going on up at the mall where I was going at. You know, I was doing some school clothes shopping. Right. And when when I went up with my aunt, she wanted to go try on some clothes. So I'm like, all right. So when she walks out, I said, damn, girl, fine as hell. You know, joking around. Right. And then, and then the, the like, one of the, uh, the, like, one of the ladies that worked there or something, they came up to me and they literally said to my aunt, would you like for me to remove him from the store? Really? That's so funny. <laughs> That's well, I can see that. really funny. I can see that. Just based on talking to you the last year and a half. <laughs> no, I mean, but, but like, I, I'm like, just like, with you, like I felt so like it's Gold just my like baby. Right. What are you going to say, Johnny? Johnny, you're going to say something. Yes, uh, he was born in 1996. Yeah, I had a hair transplant that was screwed up after that. <laughs> yeah, my the, the underwear that I'm wearing, I think I bought in '96. So. Oh, before I go any further, I need to say hi to my hair loss brother from another mother, Joe. Yeah, I know, Joe. I was just thinking about that. I was devastated enough by Spencer and Andrew tonight. And you didn't say hi. I'm headed for a heavily sedated evening, man. See, we're all headed for a heavily, I, heavily sedated evening. I'm on my way right now. I, tr- I truly apologize Betsy, for that, Betsy, you Joe. made a very smart um, move by not in the again. hospital because I'm sure a lot of uh, several nut cases might, might show up. Oh, by the way, I just, I just wanted to say hi to my Uncle Joe. Hey, Nate, how you doing? I'm doing good. All right, boys, listen, I'm glad you guys are connecting and all that stuff. It's really lovely, but I'm going to take a break. So, uh, so Andrew, uh, pop, pop these guys down. Let me give out the phone number. It's 718-717-2200. Tonight's show is live from uh, the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Uh, again, 718-717-2200. Give us a call. We'll be right back uh, after this short break. In one of your interviews with John Candy, I believe, it looked like an older interview. You had less hair than you have today. How do you explain that? I uh, don't wear a wig, sir. Paint your bald spot? What bald spot? You paint your bald spot? I don't know what you're talking about, sir. My hair grows. You paint your bald spot? I don't have a bald spot. How come you had less hair on the tape? Maybe my hair grew. Maybe I had a bad haircut that day. By the way, something. What do you care? Paint your bald spot? I don't. Do you paint your bald spot? Paint your bald spot? Hey, guys. Welcome back. Uh, I got a little feedback there. Maybe we could try to fix that. I don't know why that's happening. Anyway, uh, 
Ball Truth, phone number 718-717-2200. Actually doing the show live from Manhattan tonight, live from the Upper East Side uh, of Manhattan. Um, so I know things look a little odd. It's kind of, I'm just on my laptop doing the show, Skyping it in uh, to uh, Andrew Zarian, guys from Queens Network. And uh, as most of you know, we are internationally syndicated through GFQ. Uh, and uh, you can check us out on gfqlive.tv. And of course, guys from queens.com. Uh, you're seeing this feed on Stickcam. You are listening to it live on uh, iTunes Radio and Stitcher Radio and uh, all over the internet uh, at this point. And it's so great to have the opportunity to not only do the sh show live now for you guys, uh, for my longtime listeners and viewers, but now the show is being archived with the help and actually through the GFQ network. And you can see the archives on theballstreet.com. You could also uh, check out the audio and video podcasts on uh, GFQ page of uh, iTunes. Is that right, Andrew? Yes. Am, yeah. I get, am I getting that all right? Perfect. I don't want to pull a Chauncey. I know I'm getting old. No, no, no. That's but, perfect. You know, I, I see him like stumbling through that. And I'm like, Jesus, how long has he been doing this with you guys? And I don't want to be that guy. By the way, I saw George was trying to call in on the break. George, call back. I, I brought him back up on the line, but he might have gotten confused because the music was playing. Okay. He gets confused a lot. It's okay. I'm just kidding. Do me a favor. Uh, knock the shot over to you because I forgot my drink over there. And I, right, so I, uh, hey, guys, back I'm going to go. I'm uh, gonna go get it. Johnny and, uh, and, and Joe are on the line. Hey, guys, you there? I'm here. I'm here. Joe, you there? Yes. Uh, uh, you hear me? Yes, I do. I do. Yeah, just one second. Could you just. I'm just back. Talk I'm sorry. To Feel free to e email my information to you. It's fine. You heard that? Spanish? Yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I just heard that. I didn't want to, uh, you know, take advantage of, of your, uh, you know, uh, our 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 relationship. And you know, I don't even know why I said that, but I didn't want to send Andrew your information <laughs> without your permission. So, Jesus. But this my, uh, I mean, my. Not my resume, but my my email my email address and my uh, cell number. I actually want his resume. No. Yeah, I don't think you ever actually sent me your resume. A nice by the, way, by the way, speaking of resumes, I actually uh, was skyping with Dave Salazzo, uh, the infamous intern Dave, the other night, and uh, he said he was going to call in, and he he didn't. So. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think about that, Joe? What? That Dave was going to call the ball truth? He said he was going to call me and that I, I invited him to call the show at some point. And he's like, sure, sure will. And that was it. Well, he's been, I'm not, Dave's a nice guy, but he's been known not to, not to keep all his promises. Well. Like once he left me t sitting in a bar for three hours, then he calls me and tells me he was at Albany. Now, that's very funny. I forgot about that, man. That's true. No, you I guys, didn't. You guys are supposed to meet up in New York, in Manhattan. And I was there at, waiting for him. At, at Gallagher's. And he calls you when you were there and said that he was in Albany. Right. Yeah, that's right. fucked up. I tell you, that's not, that's not nice. That's a weird move. That's, that's a bad move. That's a that's an very, very irresponsible move. What are you going to do? Joe, I'll never stand you up. What? I would never stand you up. Well, just now, call me next. I mean, call me in advance. You guys get together. I know it's bad circumstances hello? now, but I, I, I mean, I miss my friend Spencer, of course, and I want to meet you, Andrew, and I will sign an autograph for you. I do want an autograph. I told you, I want, I need one from you. I'll put it on on the wall no, in the I, studio. I, Can I take a picture with I you, did. or no? Is that off limits? Well, if you promised me you wouldn't post it, I would take I would take your word for it. No, I would put it in the wall on the wall in the studio. Yeah, I, well, I do with sunglasses on. Okay. At that time. Okay. Which uh, I definitely, I definitely think you should get a picture of Joe somewhere. I should have a we should, I should have a picture of Joe like in the shadows on our website. Spencer, I remember years ago I gave you a picture of me and my wife. You don't remember that? 
I do remember it. You gave me a picture of you and your wife, and I was actually surprised at uh, how attractive your wife was because you had basically, uh, you know, in my view, uh, you know, destroyed her reputation in my eyes. I mean, you made her sound like she was a pig, and she was a really good-looking woman. Yes, she was. I think uh, Phyllis and Joe would do an excellent show on um, the GFQ. Yeah, relationship advice with Joe yeah, and Phyllis. Yeah, like, like, yeah, that would be great. You, you can have an well. FCC, FCC Phyllis, investigation will the profanity she do. <laughs> Phyllis is a funny name. You know, it just, it just is a funny, comical name. It's, you know, I, I think just the name Joe and Phyllis in some sort of a, you know, context of a show would be hilarious. What would Suncast, you call the show? Suncast, make bumpers for the Joe and Phyllis show. <laughs> and guys, I just want to—I just want to apologize for all you guys that might be trying to call in. You know, these are unusual circumstances. I'm skyping into uh, uh, to Andrew's studio. He doesn't have a full board, you know, a uh, a hybrid setup, and he's been able to jerry rig it. So we're at least getting you know two or three calls, and which have, is great. I have four lines. I could open up four lines. Two are taken now. That's great. Yeah, so we have two open lines. Me, yeah. Let me say something quick. You've been a very smart move. I don't, then you almost stayed in the hospital. Your father's in. That would have been a very bad move. I have to say, yeah, I say, yeah. I, yeah I, so. You know what? I, I've made bad moves in the past, but I kind of like, you know, I, I, I usually catch myself. I could guarantee you, you would have had some undesirable people showing up there. Hold on. Uh, I just got Skyped in. Uh Let's see. I don't know if you're watching me, Beth, but uh, George can call in at 718-717-2200. It's hard for me to type from here. 718-717-2200. So I'll tell him to give, tell him, tell him to give us a call. That's it. 718-717-2200. That's the number. It's really weird doing a show this way, by the way, guys. It's kind of like, you know, I, I kind of see shows like this on, you know, on Ustream and Stick Cam, you know, and it's it, it's kind of like disjointed because you don't really know what's going on because uh, I, I have real, really no control of it. But I think it's you're, you're doing a really good job, Andrew. I'm not even listening. I'm, I'm you, you don't even know what I'm doing right now. I have no idea what you're doing. What are you doing? It's an outstanding job. I'm uh I'm painting my I have a sun a sun kissed can that I just drank and I'm with with permanent marker I'm coloring in the sun kissed. Yeah, you know that's that's, that's the story of our lives. I man. swear that's, to God, I just I just held it up on camera. Look at this. That is JFQ in a nutshell. This is their producer right now. This is what I'm doing. That's unbelievable. Did I tell you, Andrew is definitely an asset to your show and. I, I, he's not losing his hair, oh, but I do consider him a balding brother, a fellow hell of a suffer. Joe, that earlier. means so much, actually. You don't you even have to understand. Andrew's bald on the inside, you know, and, and and that's why we love him. You don't even know how messed up I was. That Spencer was coming and he could see my hair. I kept asking, Jess, how's my hair? How's my hair? How's my hair? Dude, you had me sit in the front row of a comedy show under incredibly bright lights. Your hair looked great. Dude. It, it doesn't make any difference. But I'll, I'll tell you, it's getting a little gray, though. A little? A little bit. A little gray. It's completely gray. Uh, There's nothing wrong with that. Not a little gray. I have gray hair. Hang on. We got a call or something. No. If this is Nate, I'm hanging up on you. Caller. You're on the air, caller. He, he hung up. You know, it's George trying to call in from like a Denny's and he's trying to Skype into you guys. I don't know what happened. No, it's not George because I, I know George's number. George called before and um, he didn't call again. I don't know. I don't no, know. Wait, phone, guys, the phone number is 718 717 2200. But yeah, I mean, it's it's a little disjointed. It's, 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 it's a little different than when I have, you know, I'm in the studio with regular headphones and. And all that stuff, but it's actually kind of fun. It's very organic, and I, I think it's pretty well, it's, cool that we're able to do this. It's adversity, and you're overcoming it. You know what oh, I absolutely. want to know, Spence? When you when you did radio, right? You didn't run yeah. your board. I mean, you had a board op that did everything. Absolutely. And you had the producer. So, is this anything like that? Maybe it's a little disjointed because 
um, you're not running anything. Well, no, it's 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 a little bit like it, but it's not like it because a I can't really see you, and I had a you know a console in front of me with I'm able to control my volume, I'm able to control you know see you know what calls are coming in. I have a computer screen uh, where the screener is telling me you know what's going on, and I know that you're trying to Skype me and stuff like that, which is actually pretty cool. But it's just a little different. Plus, um, I can't really hear myself in my headphones. Oh, yeah, you don't have so, monitoring on there. Yeah, so it makes a big difference. Yeah. Because I, I'm just basically, I, my my hearing is kind of muted because the headphones are in, and I'm just talking, and I can't hear what's going on. Uh, I can't hear myself. Well, you're so pulling, it, makes, you're, it makes it more difficult. You're pulling it off. I'm doing my best, bro. Yeah. Uh, so doing my best. I but you, are, you are a good producer, I'm telling you. You're doing, you're doing a great job. I'm you trying. Really are. I'm trying. I'm trying. Um. I, I was I, I told you a story about how uh, you took a picture with Jess at yeah. uh, when you got together and I told Spencer the story off the air. Uh, a bunch of my buddies sent me an email and all of them were writing the same thing. It was one was, um, well, is that the man that Jessica left you for? And the other one was, uh, <laughs> is that's what that's what it's going to be like in 40 years when Jessica leaves you for a rich dude. <laughs> So uh, I got I heard all of it. So I guess you do look yeah. good, Spence. Your hair was looking good. You got a caller, by the way. Good. Caller, call in. Or caller, <laughs> you're on the air. Sorry. Hey, Spencer, what's happening? Oh, my God. High pitch. Bro, what's up? High pitch. Well, just another Sunday night just hanging out. Missed the show the last couple of weeks. Glad to... See you back on and up again. Yeah, we're doing our best, man. We were doing our best. I'm glad. I'm glad you're uh, you're watching. So, what's going on? How do you feel? Well, I've had, I've had some other issues other than here yeah, dental problems, but other than that, I'm doing good. But well, I'll tell you, I just want to say, what, I'm, really um, figured out teeth. Hope everything hope everything goes good for your father. I know what oh, that's thanks. like. I. My father, you know, I took care of him until he was 85 myself. Yeah. It's rough. It's rough when you see, you know, no matter what your feelings are, your relationship with your dad is. And, you know, you, I remember you, ta- you calling the show and kind of talking about some of the similarities with your dad being, like, really depressed and all that stuff. You know, it, it, no matter what, it's, it's sad to see a human being decline that way. And, yeah. you know, knowing, knowing what he once was. I can totally understand and agree with that every bit of it. Yeah. But but in, anyway, yeah, uh, yeah. My phone was kind of messed up the last time I called in. Besides my little joke, so I that's why I got off so quickly. <laughs> oh well, it's all right, man. That's good. But that's I am good. getting good. a lot of back feed right now. You're getting feedback. Yeah. 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 I mean, it could be the Skype line. I, you know, it just could be your phone. Sometimes, you know, the internet's a weird thing. Yeah, you just make best for what you have. But uh, I just want to say hi to everybody, Joe and Johnny and George. I know he's somewhere out there, but uh, and um, I, I basically been laying back on my ear situation. Haven't really been doing anything. Well, I know that you had some regrowth. You had a real scare from uh, the, the Kenalog injections, right? Was it Kenalog? What was it? What did you have done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of these, you know, lumps I have, or, or cysts, whatever you want to call them. But um, right. it was just weird how I had the um, injections with Dr. Bernstein, and everything went well. Right. But I still do have the bumps on my head, so I don't know if I should go back to see him, but I am eventually going to have to see somebody because I'm going to need prescriptions for the finasteride. But, um, well, he's, anyway, a, he's definitely a trustworthy guy. You've already had good experience with him. Uh, at, the, at the very least, you can get your, your finasteride prescriptions from him, right. and you can have I, him take I, another I, look. Ex- exactly. And, and I just... You know, get to visit New York City for the day. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it, I think it'd be really great if uh, if we're all in New York to get Joe, High Pitch, uh, you know, Andrew, and whoever else is going to be in the city together. 
I think that would be pretty interesting. That would be pretty awesome. I do see that Bob. Actually, I still do have relatives in, I have relatives in Queens, New York. Oh, really? So, oh, yeah. So, so high pitch, would you go on camera? I know Joe wouldn't. Um, <laughs> that would be pretty, uh, I don't know. I'd have to think that one over. I really would. All right. Well, you think about you it. Know. All right. <laughs> All right, bro. Listen, but, thank, thank, thanks so much for the call. I'm glad that you're doing better. And, you know, you don't have to always be trying to figure out. I mean, you can take a rest from it for a while. You had a bad experience. Uh, you know, I, if you can deal with what you have right now, maybe she just, you know, not even go for any well, more injections for a while. I just, I, I'd like to get rid of these lumps. I would like to get, you know, they're not real horrible, but I would like to, you know, that to me is the first thing in starting and trying to go in the right direction, then I'd still like to find a doctor that could straighten out these graphs and make it look more natural. Right. But, but um, unfortunately, I'm not really on the same page with Dr. Bernstein as far as that goes. Right. I think he's very, he would basically said, he, you know, the work that he would do would, wouldn't make really a significant change. And I just thought that would be kind of like the same experience I went through um, with Dr. Vogel, who was actually an excellent doctor. Right. Um, they, they're both excellent doctors. I just have to um, find the doctor that's going to meet my, my needs and what I really want to have achieved. And I know I, I right, think that's What did Dr. Bernstein want to do to you, exactly? He wants to cut the graphs down? I don't know what he wants to do. What was that now? What did Dr. Bernstein and Zafi want to do to your graphs? Cut them out of your head? Well, he basically it told me that, you know, he was on my side, but it wouldn't be a significant difference. It would be, I think he would, you know, basically not do that many graphs. Um, and that's what the experience I had already had with Dr. Vogel. I had seen him went down a few times to to, um, to Baltimore, and uh, every time it just, you know, I could still see the same things that I was looking at that I wanted changed and weren't getting changed. So it's just kind of um, frustrating for me. Well, yeah, I can understand what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> well, and, uh, you know, yeah. of course, all the scars on the back of my head are a whole other thing, but... I mean, those you can't see, but it's not like you can, um, I mean, sure, you know, you can't. I, I, luckily, I have somebody that cuts my hair in my family. So I avoid you having You actually have you someone know. cut your hair, actually look at your scalp? Isn't that kind of frightening? No, I have, I have somebody in my family that cuts hair. So I don't have to really, you know, get embarrassed with a stranger seeing all the all the scars. I see. I know the feeling. Well, see, I've, I've, cut, I've cut my own hair for the last 35 years, so I wouldn't know it. Would it feel yeah, like well, I'd probably, I'd probably be doing the same thing if I didn't have this one person in my family that I'm close to. And actually, they're the only person that really knows about it in my family. And I do come from a large family, so I've kept it pretty <laughs> quiet. What'd you say you took him for a lobster sandwich? <laughs> what did he say? It sounded like he, he he just said he took him out for a lobster sandwich. What did you just <laughs> say? A lobster sandwich? No. I said, oh. actually, if I'm speaking a little messed up, I do have, like I said, I do have some dental issues right now. Oh, no, you've been speaking but, pretty good until then. I just, I, it sounded like lobster sandwich. I, I understood everything you said up until that point. <laughs> Maybe you have a, a lobster sandwich on your mind. <laughs> <laughs> It's possible, man. It's possible. There's well, plenty of I'm good glad. Seafood places here. <laughs> say, that, say that again. I said, Spencer. There's plenty of good seafood places here. In Boston. Yeah, I I know that, man. I know that. Well, look, I'm glad that you know, you know. I, I keep saying this. I was really worried for you when the hair wasn't growing back. I'm glad you were at least past that point. And you know, hopefully, when the time is right, yeah, you know, you'll be able to get what you need to get done. 
Yeah, I just have to decide what doctor that I can find to. I just have to finally decide to see some other doctors again. But I mean, I'm not pushing anything. I'm, you know, I just want to speak to them and assess, you know, what my goals are and what they can do for me. All right, man, will you let us know, you know, before you make a decision, just make sure you call the show, all right? All right, Spencer, take care, take care, Joe, take care. All right, listen, take care of yourself. Thanks so much for calling, man. It's good to hear your voice. Spence, you got another caller. All right. Caller, you're on the air. Hello. Holy shit. Hello. What's happening, man? Um... Hey, it's uh, it's George from the Gulf Coast. I hear that, man. How are you? Um, I've been trying to get through to you guys for several weeks, and your the phone numbers that you gave me, neither one of them would work, man. I would call it would go straight to voicemail. Who's voicemail? I don't know. I would call the numbers you gave me, and I would hear a beep, and then I would hear, you know, please leave a message. So I don't know. Yeah, that's I just, on, I that's just on Andrew, spoke, dude. And Andrew must I be giving you the wrong number. I just spoke with uh, the lovely Yvette who gave me your phone number. I answered the hey George, it's Andrew. I answered the the the, the studio number that you have uh, that I gave you, and then uh, you, I had you on hold for I a little bit. I kept screaming. I kept screaming hello, hello, and I heard somebody. I heard somebody say hello, and there was really loud music, but. You know, I could not. I couldn't seem to engage you in a conversation. I'm getting a lot of, of staccato feedback here of my own voice. It'll go away. Okay. Well, I appreciate the assistance. I don't know why your numbers are not working. You were you were on hold for like three weeks. Uh, George, you were on hold when you called. We were on a break. Oh, okay. So what's happening, bro? Long time. How are you? I'm hanging in there, man. I've just uh, it's been really, really, really frenetically busy. Personal stuff going on, business stuff, business trips. Had to go to Orlando. Being a lot of just a lot of uh, junk. So I, uh, I always forget how much I miss this program until I call in and hear somebody talk about lobster sandwiches. <laughs> you know, uh, something as something as bizarre and uh, tangential as lobster sandwiches on a hair loss program. So, uh, well, uh, did tonight's I whole show, tonight's whole show is out of whack, which is kind of, it's kind of we're just you know kind of bullshitting back and forth. There's a little hair loss, and I mean I, I, Joe's kind of trying to keep us on track with the hair loss thing. By the way, what are you doing in New York, man? Is your dad okay? Uh, he was actually hospitalized about uh, three weeks ago, so I've been here. I've been here for three weeks. So, are you like crashing on at the at the uh, Casa Casa Zirian? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm actually uh, at uh, Casa del Cobran. <laughs> oh, you're at your dad's house. Yeah, I'm doing the show live from the Upper East Side of Manhattan. So you could, if you're, if you're online, Side, you'd be able to see. Do you have it. a view of, the, of uh, Central Park? No. No, no view, no view of Central Park. No view of Central okay. Park. Uh, well, tell me what I had missed in the last three weeks. Have we had any massive breakthroughs? What's going on with that thing where you had the doctor on talking about the injections that would make the hair follicles stick in and make new hair follicles grow? It was some big, big deal. Have we heard anything more about that, or is it still status quo? Well, no massive breakthroughs. I mean, uh, we just had the ISHRS conference in Alaska, and everyone is really, you know, uh, clamoring to get information about what's happening with histogen and what's happening with Adirans and what's happening with ACEL. And we will be getting that information out to everybody as soon as I could, uh, you know, get these guys uh, to do the interviews. Uh, I already have a couple of things arranged with uh, Jerry Cooley and uh, Craig Zeering. Uh, obviously, Craig Zeering's uh, connected with histogen. And I'm going to be speaking again with David Hall from Replicel to do a kind of like a second part of the initial interview. And I'm hoping to get that done uh, this week. So uh, nothing that I can share with you right now, but there's a lot of good things happening, George. Let's put it that way. And we will get the news to you as soon as possible. I'm very glad to hear it. Uh, so are, are you are you and uh, Andrew and, and Joe like uh, hitting the restaurant and eating big juicy steaks and boozing it up? No, I had one night... Uh, Andrew actually uh, sponsored a comedy show at a place called the Triple Crown 
Tavern and Triple Crown Inn on, on, uh, on, on, on the west side. And I was able to get out of the hospital for a couple of hours and meet them. Uh, but I haven't really been going out at all. I've been, uh, honestly, in the hospital like nine, ten hours a day. Uh, hanging out with my dad, dealing with all the doctors and all the, you know, the bullshit that, that, that he has to deal with at a hospital and just trying to get him out of there, basically. Dealing with the bullshit in the hospital is like a 24-hour-a-day thing. If you want to make it one, it can be one. Well, you have to really be an advocate for any patient in a hospital. And it's sad to see people who are in really bad shape that have and no family members that either you know, are able to or willing to be by their bedside to make sure that everything is being taken care of. Because let if me you tell don't you, do that, if you don't do that, they will, they will kill you. Well, they'll either kill you or, you know, I mean, not necessarily kill you. In some cases, they can, obviously. But uh, there's a lot of just, you know, if people are in pain, it takes forever. You know, those, you, know you ring those bells and uh, yep. some, someone may come in, someone may not come in. Um, you know, if you're dealing with multiple issues, like my dad is with basically being blind and, you know, uh, you know, dementia setting in and all kinds of things. I mean, he really needs someone there. So... I've been living here for uh, well, we almost three weeks. Him, we will keep him in our prayers. I'm sorry to hear about his setback, but I'm glad he's very lucky and fortunate he has you there to keep your, to take control of the situation, keep your finger on the pulse of it. So I take it you're going to, your goal is to get him out of the hospital, get him home and, and back into a stable situation before you can return to California, I guess. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, something like that. I'm going to have to get him to rehab after this incident. You know, you have to realize that when, you know, you and I are in bed for a couple of days, you know, it's, uh, you know, you bounce right back, but it's kind of like when you're 88 years old, for every day you're laying in bed, it's like being in bed for a week for us, you know. There's severe, so, there's severe muscle, muscle atrophy, and uh, you they, they can actually, I mean, when I took exercise physiology in college, I learned that you will lose muscle mass three times as fast as you gain it. Right. So your muscles can atrophy rather quickly, and you can you can be uh, really debilitated after coming out of a short hospital stay. Absolutely, absolutely, and you know it's amazing. He's getting his strength back to some degree, but I mean, you know, he's he's effed up. It, it is what it is. I I want him to be at least in a stable rehab. He has his girlfriend. You know, it's a place where you know he can be totally comfortable, and I know that he's going to be on the mend and out of the acute, you know, uh, hospitalized situation and then you know i can probably fly back back to la for a week and then you know take care of business but I, i'm going to be back and forth i mean it's going to be a pretty uh harried time no pun intended well get as much sleep as you can drink as much fluid as you can try to stay off the alcohol that'll just make it worse <laughs> i don't know you what need, you're talking you about your, I, alcohol you always seems strength, to make it man. what was that i said stay off Try to stay out of the booze because if you're uh, if you're getting run down from all this running back and forth, alcohol is not going to help you. Uh, I have been actually uh, getting in like like mini workouts uh, almost every day, and I've been eating pretty well. I mean, I have been binging on New York pizza and things of that nature, uh, but for the most part, I, I do try to take care of myself because I know how important it is, especially uh, you know when. Uh, I have to deal with business, and he's depending on me as well. And it's it's like even though we live in the information age, and it's it's you know it's a new world with the internet and the ability to basically do everything from my iPhone and from my laptop, uh, like the show, for instance. It's still uh, a strained situation, uh, a strained situation. I, I meant to say, uh, to try to conduct business out of a suitcase. You know, yeah, like, I can yeah. imagine that would be the case. Uh, you know, if, if you had the kind of technology and connections that the president has, you know, you could probably be, be a lot easier for you. But uh, living out of a suitcase and trying to do, I, I'm hearing everything I'm saying echoed right back at me. It's really driving me crazy. Yeah, it's pretty, I hate when that happens um, too, but I, it's, um, Andrew, what, are you gonna, what can you do yeah. about that? That's a mixed minus by, thing with Skype. Way, uh, yeah. Can no, we, well, uh, when we all end up in New York, can we like go have a pizza party at Andrew Andrew's father's uh, pizza joint? Yes, but he sold the place, so. Oh no. Yeah. Well, oh, we can crap. still go there. Well, we can still go there. We can find some place better. No, you know what the problem is actually, Spence? It's with the Skype. It's the way Skype handles a regular phone call. 
So it, it starts freaking out when it's a regular phone call, but it, it oh, really? should. Yeah, yeah. And I got I got to redo the mix minus. All right. Well, sorry about that, George. What are you gonna do? No, it's it's no, it's not that big a deal. I'm just trying to ignore my voice coming back at me and staccato snippets of uh, in from of, of sound. But uh, look, I really appreciate getting to get on here. Actually, I've been calling every week, but both of those numbers you gave me—the studio line and the three one zero number—neither one of those numbers worked, man. It just kept going to voicemail. Well, you also you have to understand so, that I've been in New York for three weeks, so we're not doing the show from the studio. Yeah, well, that that was it. You know, thankfully, Yvette answered the phone when I called your house. <laughs> so she oh, really? Me out. Interesting. So, so yeah, she hey, just George. actually skyped me. She actually skyped me and said that uh, George could actually verify uh, her existence with Andrew because Andrew thinks that uh, Yvette is a real doll. I, I, I do. Th no, here, here's my theory. I think there is somebody that answers the calls and shows <laughs> up at places <laughs> in the shadows. You never see a face. You never see her. You hear her Stepford in a distance. Wife. No, no, it's 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 it's, it's nobody. It's just it just. Like a like a someone that works for him that he says like listen I need to keep this up that I have this wife so uh, if like once in a while just yell at me from the background that's the she whole deal girl, he's I actually Batman his wife twice. <laughs> I, I don't I twice. Joe you know my theory about you I think you're Spencer <laughs> I think <laughs> George I think she George is Spencer I do like I'm doing like a Phil Hendry yeah. I think George is Spencer. I think Johnny is Spencer. I think Joe is Spencer. <laughs> so wait, it's, it's Spencer talking through a voice synthesizer to create different uh, voice inflections. Yes, and, he's, and he's voice, uh, different accents. Haven't you seen? Phil, yeah, haven't you seen Phil Hendry do okay. this? He's been doing it for twenty five years. That's what that's what he's doing. <laughs> you know, but it's well, like you know, you know every right. once in a while, right, Andrew, my you know, mic will be on and then I'll walk into the office and I'm skyping with Andrew, and she'll say something, and Andrew kind of hears his voice in the distance. And, you know, Yvette was with me in New York for, uh, for a week, and uh, we were supposed to get together, but because my dad was in such an acute situation, you know, really wasn't, it, it didn't have the time or really wasn't much in the mood to socialize. So we just couldn't do it, and Yvette went back to California, and now him and Jess don't believe that she exists. Oh, my God. What, what are you going to do? And it then, of course, like when I meet them, I'm like a bad soap opera. Yeah. No, I just think he's the greatest broadcaster ever. So How this is his way of like, of like build, of building a fake, a fake audience and like keeping all the money for himself, right? No, no, he has an <laughs> audience. I just don't think any of you guys are are real. I just think that it's him. I'm just some. I'm like some lonely guy, you know. Like I have this house, <laughs> this, big, this big house with like cut out celebrities that I sit with. <laughs> Justin yeah. Bieber. Yeah. Everybody, everybody just sitting at God. dinner. Yeah. It's like these, you know, these, these real dolls that I have made up. Yeah. It's a great well, life. I just want to know how you do the high pitch Eric voice. The high pitch Eric voice, I really have to use a, a real special uh, device. No, but no. High pitch Mike is real. The Boston accent. High pitch is real. High pitch is a real guy. High pitch Eric. Yeah. High pitch Eric. No, wait a minute. High pitch is not the same dude that has uh, that has cerebral palsy, is he? No, we got a, we got a guy with Tourette syndrome that calls the show. I forgot his name. Well, you got name. a CP guy too, don't you? Uh, I don't know if we have a, a cerebral palsy guy. I know we have. Uh, I, I think he actually may. Uh, maybe he's a GFQ fan. Is there a guy that has cerebral palsy that's a GFQ fan? Uh, possibly, yes. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, it's very possible. Ninety-eight percent sure. Yeah, broad spectrum. <laughs> yeah, we have some we have some very interesting folk uh, listening and watching the program. That's what makes these shows great. And I, I want to apologize to my you guys are the my king of the freaks. Listen. Say again. You that? you guys you and uh, Andrew are the king of the freaks. We are the king. We are the king of the freaks. I brought, sadly I brought Andrew into the mix as yeah. far as. The freak show because I think that he had his own freaks, but then my freak started to call his show. Yeah, it's it's fine. Well, he's it's the fine. king of the cyber media, and you're the king of the freaks. I am the total king of the freaks. King of the sufferers. But I, am I, but I, I, I like that too? title. But I want to apologize, guys. By the way, and maybe I shouldn't keep apologizing. But 
for the regular listeners, for like the hardcore hair guys that are, you know, waiting to listen to the program every week, you know, uh, we're trying to do the best that we can. I'm sorry that we're not just focused on the hair issues, but there's been a lot going on in my life, obviously. And I just think it's great that we have the opportunity to, to, to broadcast and just get together, even if we're not focusing on hair. Spencer, I've given the updates. There's nothing really more to say. I've given all the updates. You know that. Yeah, but we don't have a lot of phone lines. But, you know, I, I will tell you that uh, Andrew's really come through uh, with the phones. I mean, he's like, initially, he was just trying to figure out a way to keep you on the line, Joe, and take another call. And then he jerry-rigged it to, to the extent where he's able to get four calls now, which is great. Yeah, the ball trick could thank me. I owe AT&T $4,000 for this setup. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I'm sure the, the ball should reimburse you, Andrew. Yeah, just yeah. Send, uh, send, send Joe the bill. Yeah. What's the, Spence, so, why do you so, expect to leave New York? You, you don't know I yet? Really, I really don't know. Um, and, I, Joe, I will try to see if we can figure out a way for us uh, all to get together before I leave. But I will tell you this. I'm going to be back, like, n no longer than a week to ten days after I go back to L.A. I mean, I can't just uh, up and leave my dad at this point, you know, for an extended period of time anymore because he's, he's pretty messed up. No, so, I, I just feel that, that? I, I, I was five minutes away. That's what, that's what I, I was so close, but yet so far. Dude, you're still close. You're only in Staten Island. It's a quick train ride or cab ride. You know? Joe, come deal. to the studio when we're recording The Ball Truth. Yeah, you know what? If I'm, if I'm here next week, I'm going to actually be doing it from Andrew's studio. So why Where don't you come out uh, if I'm here on Sunday? Uh, Spencer, are you thinking about moving your dad out uh, with you there in L.A.? It's possible. The only problem is, you know, he has a, uh, a relationship with a woman here. And, you know, it would, you know, in my view, it's, it's really, it, obviously that's something I can never give him. I can never give, I'm not, I'm not talking about the sexual side of things. I can't even imagine him having sex at this point. But it's just the, uh, the emotions from, you know, a woman that he's able to get still at his age. I don't want to take that away from him if he could still enjoy that. So my goal would be to try to keep him in, in this apartment. And, you know, if he needs more help, get more help. And as long as she's, you know, interested and she seems like she, she wants to be with him, I don't want to take that away. But if, it get, if push comes to shove uh, and I have no choice, I mean, what am I going to do? I'll have to take him out to Los Angeles. Right. But I think he would really uh, probably go down pretty quickly at that point. Has he been out there, okay. Spence? Oh, yeah. He hasn't been out there out here recent out there out i'm here now so yeah he hasn't been out there re recently but i'd say the last time was maybe uh actually it was probably before my brother died so it was like maybe like five years ago five or six years ago okay can I, can I ask you could you take the woman with his girlfriend with you to los angeles first a short uh that, that's not gonna happen yeah I, yeah I mean i don't think she would i don't think she would yeah, Yvette just texted me. The last time my father was in California was 2004. And he came out like maybe three times. 2004? Are you serious? That can't be right. No, it doesn't sound right. Like really. I'm still shocked yeah. that Nate was born 1996. 2004 was the first time. I think maybe like 2006. I don't know. I don't remember. I, I think, think maybe he was after my brother died. Uh, I don't remember. But anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, my dad is not in a position in life right now where he really is able to enjoy much. And it's really, you know, this is, uh, honestly, this is my thing. When I, if I make it to like 65, I'm going to rig up like a Kevorkian machine and just like have it ready. That's, that's, that's what I'm going to have it in the garage and like, you know, however, you know, every year, you know, uh, re-up the meds, whatever I need to do to make sure that everything is, you know, uh, in shape and ready to go. And then if I'm ever at a point where I think that I'm going to be inca incapacitated and unable to live a normal life, you know, as long as I have one toe that can move, I'll be able to do it. I can well, get would you that one of those machines. Would that your hair fell out? Would that, would that, would that be a, a reason for you to use the walking machine? No, that would not be a reason. I would just, I would just, 
glue it. I would glue it on if I had to. I have a question for Joe, actually. Joe, if you could have, uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll play this this game with you. If you could sell your soul to the devil, and the deal would be that you could get hair. I mean, a full head of hair, like crazy long, like better hair than me. But you only have five years to live, and you're gonna drop dead in five years. Would you take the hair? One thousand percent, yes, Satan. Give me the contract now, sir, and I will sign it. Five years. Oh, that what, means you're what dead. A Faustian, what a Faustian deal there! My goodness. I'll do it for a year, man. Okay, how does that sound? He's negotiating down. My my real you know, doll wife just you know, one guy didn't said that, that was deep. I would do it. It is deep, man. That, that's really, that's really, it's really heavy that you would even do because it's not like you're alone in this world. You have children. You know, you have Vincent. You have a, a 17 year old daughter, and you have people that love you, man, and a wife. I would never sell my soul. That out of all the years of suffering, I know maybe one nanosecond of happiness isn't that am I entitled to that? No, you're entitled to the happiness. I'm just saying, but you know. I just wish that you can, you know, you realize what you have in life. And well, do me a favor, cut the shot over to you, man. I gotta, I gotta do something. Wait, I'm still painting this soda can. Okay. So, Andrew, <laughs> the answer to my question is, I'd sign yeah. it for one year. One year? You would sign it for one year? Yeah. But I mean, yeah. you have your kids, you have your family. Like, don't you? What, what would they say? You know, Dad took a deal with the devil to get hair, and now yeah. he's dead. <laughs> and now, now we Adam. all hate hair. And then you're, you're, you I'm know what's going to happen to your son? I'll tell you what will happen to your son. Your son will have a great head full of hair, and he'll resent hair, and he'll shave his head. Is that what you want? He, he has a gene. He definitely has a gene. For, and then I'll have a bowl and stuff like that. Talking about your that. kid? kid? Well, I it. said, I told him, I'm like, if you take that deal, imagine your son having a full head of hair, and he resents hair, so he just shaves his head all the time. <laughs> he makes himself into a sufferer because he doesn't want to deal with hair. I could see that That's happening. That's pretty odd. That's pretty strange, Andrew. Right, well, it could happen. That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty odd. But I would. That, that, you know, I really appreciate that question. You hit it right on the mark. Yes, I would. You know what? Six months, even. How about three months? How about just one month? A what? Yes. One month, you would take that. That's right. I have. Uh, I potted you down, Spence. By the way. I see you're on the phone. <laughs> or he caught a new tail. I don't know what he did. I don't understand who's that, that, Joe. Who's, who's, who's laughing at that? I'm a little offended by that. I, that's George. George is laughing. I'm not laughing at it. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> George, to live every life in, by being unable to live your bed, leave your bed, except to use the restroom whenever, or go to a doctor. It's a pretty sad way to live, you know? No, but 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 Joe, I'm not but laughing Joe. at you. I'm laughing at the absurdity of you thinking you trade eternity in hell for a couple of years with a friggin' head of hair. It's he, just such an absurd idea, man. George, he did get I excited mean, for a second there. He might have thought I was the devil. <laughs> I have well, the. You do I, kind of look, I you do. Kind of do look like the the archetypical image of Mephistopheles. You know, yeah. you know, with the with the fuzzy beard and the you know the the dark features and the and the bright shining dark eyes. You know? I'm looking at myself now. I was and thinking the same thing. I'm looking at myself yeah, on man, the if, feed. If you like take your hair and make some horns with your hair. Yeah. <laughs> George, I, I'm in I'm in hell now. So what's the difference, man? You think you're in hell now, but uh, the people who are going to be in the pit for eternity, uh, it's going to be a whole different league of hell, man. Well, George, I'm an atheist, so I really don't believe you know that. Well, that's why you're you willing to trade your soul to the devil, because if you're an atheist, you don't even believe the devil exists, so the whole thing is a fairy tale to you. You were not raised no, an atheist. No, but if, if the oh. devil did exist no. by some... I used to be a very religious person. And what happened? Until I, pray, I prayed, prayed, and prayed for hair. For a cure, and it never happened, so I've divorced myself from God forever. But maybe, maybe your purpose is to be a sufferer for for a greater purpose. You know, maybe that's why you're a sufferer. Like Moses, you're you're the Moses of the sufferers. No, there's no purpose. There's no more purpose. Well, uh, but but look, you, you bring entertainment to people. Great question. Uh, Spencer's back, by the way. 
Yeah, sorry. Of the year? My my dad's girlfriend called me, and it's, it's it's just a whole thing. Is he okay? Just, yeah, yeah, he's fine. It's just you know, uh, I I can't even I can't even describe the situation. That's all I'm saying. It's it's so aggravating. Not that I'm doing the program and that she called me. Just what she called me about. Was it tiny? Was it like a small little thing? It was something that we've already discussed, and it was already something that was planned to be taken care of, and uh, she calls me in a panic. Anyway, it is what it is. This is 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 live broadcasting. You don't hear this shit on the radio, guys. This stuff does not happen on the radio. This This is reality radio, man. No, he heard the question about. Did you hear the question, Spence? Uh, about, about the devil. Being the devil. The devil. Yeah. 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 I, I know. I yeah, know. I would, take, darkness. I would take six months, Spence. I would sign up for six months. What happens if the devil came to you and said that you had to sacrifice your son Vincent? Oh, Ooh, that's I know you're one. going there. On the altar, on his altar, you had to go. You had to, you had to you had to put him on the altar, and you had to sacrifice Vincent, not in his life, but his soul. I, will, I could never hurt my I could never hurt my son. How, okay. okay, but how about this? Here, here's the thing: you sacrifice his hair. Yes. You would sacrifice his hair for your hair, so you would want it yes. at that age. So, how yes. old is Vincent now? Uh, nine. So nine years old, you take him to Satan's altar and you say, uh, here is my son, I want hair. And all of a sudden, he loses all of his hair and you get all of the hair. Yes, because <laughs> there'll be a cure in a few years, so it'll be replenished. No, enough. there's no cure. Yeah, there's the no cure. That's it. Like if, and Even if there is a cure, it wouldn't work on him. It's over. No, I couldn't cause my son that pain. No. Well, that's a surprise. That's now, did you ask? Did you ask Joe about a foot? Thank you, like, Joe. He, would, would, he, would he give up a foot for his hair? I think we know he would. Oh, or, or is that? Or is that? Because uh, Yvette just typed something to me. I don't know if you asked that or if she's asking that. Uh, maybe she would you get, What about? Would you give up a foot for your hair? One foot for a full head of yes. hair for the rest of your life? Yes. Yes. What about, what, what about both? I got a better question. No. What about both? What about? I know what your question is going to be, Johnny. What about both feet? Yes. Johnny's going to ask about your prick. Would you give up? Would you, would you give up your prick? <laughs> yes. No. Uh, would you give up Phyllis's hair at the altar of the devil for yours? Yes. Would you give up your daughter? Her life? Would, no. no. No, her, her hair. Her virginity. Her virginity. I'm getting, Good. I'm getting hurt, rum. Hang on. My children. No, yeah, that's J- J- George. I mean, uh, Johnny, man, are you you breathing in the phone again? What's up? Are you all right? No, I'm. I'm calling you through Gmail, and I'm using the headset, so I have to put it up, up oh. and down. You don't get feedback. I apologize. No, no, I, I, I just got to you. What was that, Johnny? How many years of your life did you give up? Yvette, Yvette wants to know. My real wife, my real doll wife, wants to know. What about being paralyzed? Would you, would you endure life being not even a quadriplegic, a paraplegic? You, you're in a wheelchair, but you had the hair of a god. Yes. Wow. That's pretty heavy, man. Well, Spence, would you live life like me? Every, you know, it's, you, you could never imagine. I know you're a hell of a sufferer, but no. No, I, I, I couldn't. I can't imagine, imagine, Joe. I know what you, I know. But you're you are not alone. There are there are guys who are worse off than you, as far as you know. Uh, I mean, the guy, at least from the doctors that have seen you, were all shocked at your current state. They thought you were much worse off. Yeah, that's a doctor feller, and the doctor all the doctors said that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but you know what's funny? Joe is one of the most re- the more reasonable hair loss sufferers. You think so? as, far, as far as what being the one of the more honest ones, or no, 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 he he's realistic. I mean, I, I get I get a lot of the emails. I get I get crazy, crazy emails from the people who, you know, they say don't jerk off and that's gonna cure it. Right. And I mean, I get like fifteen of those a day. I get the ones that say, um, I know you're on Propecia, which I'm not. I don't know how that rumor started. 
uh, and you're gonna, you know, your sex life is gonna go down like crazy. Well, cr- I mean, over and over again, they'll send the same email. Well, it started because you uh, had taken it for a short period of time because you were on some other medication that was making you lose your hair. Yeah, and then you were given you were given Propecia, and you took that for what, like a month? A month, thirty days. Yeah, yeah. So and and, and my penis is still working. Just to let you know. Still working. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, there's so much. Uh, listen, it's it's. I, I really feel bad for the guys that have been truly affected by finasteride and the guys that either believe or really have been permanently affected by the drug. Um, but you know, there's a, there's a new thread that was uh, I think started a couple of days ago in Ball Truth Talk, asking for positive feedback from guys who have uh, used. Finasteride, and I, I tell you that I'm, you know, a poster child for uh, using Finasteride or Propecia because I've been on it for like 16 years now, almost maybe 17 years, and not only did it slow down the process dramatically for me, I mean, I do not have any adverse side effects, at least that I, that I know of, uh, to this day, and I had some transient well, stuff at the said- very beginning. What were you going to say? Well, you also said too, Spencer, that if you had got on it at a younger age, it had been available. You would have saved even more hair. I believe that I would have. I, I definitely did. I, I was, a, you know, a, 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 a good responder. Uh, listen, I see what you know. Like I, I have to use like a little bathroom. New York is really humid, and I blow dry my hair, and I see like the, the amount of hair that sticks on the humid, you know, the the, the wall because they have like eggshell paint, and I mean the bed. It's, it's it's, this apartment is ridiculous. But, you know, I see what comes out and I see that I'm using more makeup over time. And the process continues, but it's been slowed down dramatically. And it really gave me a lot of, um, you know, uh, it gave me the ability to enjoy my appearance a little longer, much longer, almost 20 years. And, you know, uh, feel somewhat comfortable in my own skin. I, I think it's a miracle drug, at least for me. And I think a lot of people feel that way. It's unfortunate that, you know, there's a, a vocal minority that is out there who, you know, scares the shit out of everybody. But I also understand why they would because I got to tell you, if that happened to me, if I believed that I was permanently impotent from a drug, I would be screaming from the rafters also. So I, I, do, I do definitely get it. But I, I also think that a lot of people aren't, they're doing themselves a disservice by not getting on the drug because they can really buy themselves a lot of time, and it does work for a lot of people. And that's my spiel on Propecia. Am I hearing Johnny from Ohio? You are. Okay, Johnny. Hey, it's George. Hey, George. I didn't recognize your voice, man, because everybody sounds really weird on the Skype thing. Well, it's Spencer, the way he's uh, doing everyone's voices, because we're really not real. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Spencer, for you, admitting. George. Thanks, Spencer, for admitting that. <laughs> oh, no problem. Andrew, you, in a very short period of time, you'll see how real I am. Believe me, you'll see how real I am. It's almost like a threat. Yeah. That was scary. <laughs> that was scary, Joe. Are you going to like come to the bar with a knife? <laughs> He's going to scout no. me. You'll see how real I am. Yeah, when I, when I, when well, I, I, mean, when I cut you, that hair off of your you, head... Yeah. And attach it to no, mine. I, I don't mean that, Andrew. I mean you'll see, like Spencer saw me. I'll have to leave to adjust my bandage. Like Spencer noticed when I left the table, I had to adjust my bandage. Yeah, but yeah. honestly, Joe, you're like a really normal-looking dude. I mean, it's very, it's very surprising to meet you in person. I mean, you don't look like you sound. I mean, you, yeah, you're wearing a baseball cap, but a lot of guys wear baseball caps, and you know, you're kind of like a tall guy and you know, pretty good-looking dude, and. Just like a normal guy, like it, it's actually shocking when you meet you when someone meets you in person. At least, at least it was well, for me. I saw the look. I, I'm a good judge of body language. When I met Dave Salasso. I saw a look at his face when he saw me. He looked like mortified. Well, I, when you meet Dave Salasso for the first time, anybody he looks mortified. He's he's terrified of like he he's socially you know messed up. He's a, listen. I love the guy. I kept him on board for a long time, even though people were like, you know, why are you keeping this guy on? I, I thought he had a certain quality that, you know, was good for the show. But when I first met him, he was a sweaty, 
mess of a nervous wreck, man. So he was, he was probably was. more he was probably more nervous meeting you than you know. It wasn't like he was looking at you saying, "Oh man, this guy's really fucked up." He probably was concerned about how you felt about him. Well, he ingested about three balls of potato chips and about ten drinks in a matter of an hour and a half. Dude, that guy eats like a pig. I never forget. We went out with Anderson, my former producer, who's the guy that works for Love Lines. And um, and I don't know why his name dropped that, but that's just the way that it is. And, uh, and Yvette and Dave. Dave came out to California. And I think maybe somebody else. And we did a, a, drink sh- a drinking show. And that was, those were the days when I was you know, doing radio. And we'd do a live drinking show once a year. I didn't drink on the air at all. Uh, I only started that, you know, recently, which is probably not a good idea. And we just got loaded. We drank an entire bottle of Crown Royal and we went to this steakhouse and he actually was so loaded that he took a handful of your vet salad right off her plate. <laughs> <laughs> like it had dressing on it. And he just took a handful of it, man. And the guy eats like an animal. It's like it's 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 almost like a sickness. Like maybe when he was a kid, uh, I don't know if he came from a poor family. I don't know what the story is, but like you know, they put the food down on the table, and he had to rush to grab it, so he got some. Or raised by wolves. Or yeah, or raised by wolves. That's the way the guy. That's the way the guy uh, eats. I've actually never seen anything like it. To tell you the truth. So I think it's funny it's that you radio. said that he ate three three bowls of potato chips at the bar. The bartender looks flabbergasted. That's awesome. Usually you don't have to order like an extra bowl of potato chips at the bar. <laughs> but I do think it's crazy. funny that you, you go to a bar that has potato chips. No, and pretzels, they give you that too. That's old school, bro. But I don't eat no carbohydrates, man, so I don't ingest, I don't ingest that stuff. You know, they want to keep you all salted up so you order more booze. And that's the worst because if you drink, if you eat chips and pretzels and carbs and you drink, the next day you wake up looking like a monster, man. You will you know, retain so much water. I know that's why I don't ingest that that, that stuff, man. I don't, I don't I don't ingest any carbohydrates at all. Yeah, we got to figure out some sort of event, uh, Andrew, just to meet these guys. We got to figure it out. All right, what do you want to do? I don't know. I mean, the comedy thing was good, but it was so hot. I mean, I don't think Joe would have been able to deal with it. It was too crowded. I think you would have had a panic attack, Joe, honestly. Should I tell Chauncey well, to come I would have stayed only 10 minutes. Yeah. I would have left because it's too late. It's time to get home. It takes two, three hours to get home. You, you know, in like, my physical condition, you know. I yeah, you can take, right you take a you cab know. home. I, you know what? I'll, I'll get your car service my treat, all right? How's that? Well, I don't know if you're going to afford that expense. I don't know your financial situation. That would probably cost a lot. You know what? I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll find a way. I'll save, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll save my pennies to, to pay for that car service for you. Well, I mean, I know you're doing a little bit better now because I first met you, you were eating Franks and Beans. Remember that? Yes, I, 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 I was eating them because I actually happen to love Franks and Beans. One of my well, favorite you're, you're, dishes. You are you are nobody then when I first met you. Now you're a major superstar. Celebrity. Major. Celebrity. He's an A-list celebrity. Yeah, I'm a Z-list celebrity, guys. I only well, you guys know me. That's the sad part. My whole celebrity right. is like based in this little world of you know being the king of the freaks. But people, well, I, I, it is true. You see the Norwoods looking, and you know they know you. It's like the Fight Club. Jessica, you know, even kinda, Jessica says that. Like she'll walk around. She's like she'll look at him. She's like he's a Norwood. What number is he? Yeah. He's like, oh, well, he's a, like, she'll just see some, like, oh, that's a Norwood nine. I'm like, there is no nine. <laughs> Don't make up numbers. Yeah, Norwood nine, that would be pretty bad. Basically, his hairline well, would me, be like at the nape of his neck. <laughs> well, me and Dave, when guys are we would know what clocking, you know, this guy doesn't know what this, this guy was not know Dave, That's what Dave kept saying. It was Norwood kind of clocking. That's yeah, we, we've been calling it Norwood clocking. That's our term. That's a ball truth term. Don't wear it out. That's all, that's all Dave was doing. It was kind of weird. You should buy the website. You already did, I'm sure. I'm buying it right now at NorwegClocking.com. Right Son of a bitch. But, um, 
Yeah, listen, Dave, Dave is a unique guy, and I always liked Dave. And no matter what went down and it, no matter what his reasoning is for not wanting to stay in contact, I certainly don't regret ever uh, working with a guy and allowing him into my life. And, you know, I mean, I had a lot of good times with the guy. The guy was so socially fucked up. It was unbelievable. But I thought he was really smart. I, socially with him, as we developed a relationship, really enjoyed his company. And I used to just feel bad for him that he couldn't get past his anxiety. And, and maybe he has now. Maybe that's what he's, he's kind of away from this world and he's just doing the music thing. And, uh, you know, I don't know what his life is like now. I really don't. I don't know if he's possibly has a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Uh, I don't know if he moved out of his parents' house. You know, uh, I don't know if he's still, you know, into, you know, being dominated. Which is a very interesting part of his character when he first told me about that and explained to the extent of which he likes to be dominated, which he talked about on the air, but I don't want to get into it. Uh, you know, you kind of, you kind of take pause. Especially, you gave him a great job. You made a tremendous. You, you paid him a very good salary, and he disadvantaged you. I could understand it. Well, he listen. I, I when we got off the air, I told him, you know, he wasn't going to be getting the same salary. So, I mean, that's let's face it. You know, he's not obligated to do something for uh, a, a, an amount that he's not comfortable with. You know, oh, you gotta, he has got to face that. I don't know, I, I, I don't know what he's doing to pay me for each other. I don't know anything about that. Johnny's breathing. He's breathing heavy again. Are you all right, Johnny? No. Are you, wait, just, wait, wait, are you just enjoying the I show? I a question here. What's, what's up? The question is, you got Joe with chicks with cranks. Right. And you had Dave that liked to be dominated. Yes. There's no way in hell that someone halfway normal like George or I could ever apply and be an employee of yours because we're not that out there. Well, uh, we don't know that. I had no idea about Dave. You know, I, 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 who knows what's going on in George's life? I mean, maybe, well, I've got to come up with a fetish. By know, the way, Spence, I, mean, I, I, yeah, by the way, I just bought the uh, domain Nor norwoodclocking.com. Okay. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, who knows what's going with you, I don't George. consider you or, or George normal, to be honest with you. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you, can, you can fucking go to George. George. You know, George seems like a normal guy. You can go to his apartment. It could be like a dungeon with, like, gay porn all over the place. You have no <laughs> idea. You never, you never know people, man. People are freaks. <laughs> you know? Man, if you get to my house, you'd be horrified to see my room, man. What is your room like? Totally... So, uh, Totally disoriented because I'm. A, it's like a mess. Well, describe it. Well, what's around? Place. What do you have around there? Clothes all over the place. My med my medicine bottles all over the place. I'm totally because if I'm a hell of a sufferer, I'm unable to concentrate enough to clean. Now, can you take I'm a picture my of it? Over three months. Can you can you take a, a digital image of it and, and send it to me? No, I can tell you in person. Sometimes it won't I be. I don't, no, it, I, I, don't, I, I don't want to see that in person. It would just clothes, depress me. It would take two weeks sometimes. It would depress me. I, I, I think the TFQ it. should go there. I mean, it would be like that show Hoarding, man. I may you never know? come back if I go there. Yeah, I mean, if you, I, you know, Joe hoards like met it like, like Rogaine bottles. And Coco. How do you know that? I have like 50 Rogaine bottles. How do you know that? Especially my I just, I could just, you're, you're like, you're, you're a Rogaine bottle hoarder. You hoard, you know. You probably have like you know, McDonald's wrappers under your bed, and how did you know that? You know, like you have like like uh, Life magazines like piled up to the ceiling. Yeah, everything is disheveled. I don't, I live with the You know, I wear the same clothes for two weeks sometimes. Well, the clothes are all on the floor. I don't have any hangers because I'm, you know, my my hair loss obsession. You know, that's all I think about. So Phyllis doesn't right clean there. the room. Really? Right. Phyllis isn't allowed in the room, but hey, listen, guys, I'd love to continue this uh, this crazy chat, but it's uh, 23 after the hour uh, here on the East Coast. It's 1030, which is almost 1030, which is crazy. I kind of forgot what it's like to do the show so late uh, living on the West well, Coast. But I, I guess, yes, I wish you luck. I'm going to cut you off before you, you probably die. Yeah. I want to wish you luck with your father, Spencer. 
And I want to thank Andrew for his help with the show. He, he, he truly is a hairless brother. You're not losing your hair, Andrew. Don't get me wrong. You, you, you just are a hairless brother. I want to thank you. Well, I... I, and I think I'm glad that you thanked Andrew because I want to thank him for a embracing the program because you know he's running a a, a real network that you know really you know the hair loss show is a, it's an interesting little show it's kind of odd there have been you know uh, companies in the past that have embraced it but he's embraced in the way that I really felt comfortable he's not pushing me to you know do any hair ads or anything like that and he's doing us a lot of favors like you know he's taking his day off to help produce the show for us because, you know, I'm out of the studio. So uh, I, I definitely appreciate it, man. I want to thank He's you for that, Spence. And by the way, next week uh, you have a Marty's uh, Marty's Wigs on Queens Boulevard ad to do. Oh, well, I don't mind that. Yeah. Because Mar Marty's Wigs don't come off. They what don't. is that? It's Maury's Wigs. Maury's, Maury's, yeah. yeah. You can go in the pool with them. Yeah. All right, guys. Listen, well, I just want to so say much. outstanding job, guys. Oh, thank thanks, you, Andrew, thank for you. having us on. And Spencer, thanks, tell Yvette, yes, thank you very thanks. much for getting me the number so I could call in, man. Absolutely. And you know what? If I'm still in New York next week, this is the number to call. But hopefully, if I am in New York, I will actually uh, – my dad will be out of the hospital. He'll be in rehab, and I'll actually be able to go out to Queens and do the show. Wish so, you the best, Spencer. All right, man. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, let me get out the websites, theballtruth.com. Uh, IHS.org if you're interested in, in, uh, in surgical hair restoration check out the IHS again all IHS accepted members pay an annual screening fee uh, AmericanHairLoss.org for the American Hair Loss Association and if you're a woman dealing with hair loss please you need to check out womenshairlossproject.com until next week be strong and God bless I'd like to thank all of my guests today they did a swell job in showing us how easy it is so that we can really do it I can do it, they can do it, you can do it. Bye-bye for now.